Jay's Mafia. What? What is going on, everybody, guys? How is man? I hope everybody's having a great fucking week, bro. All right, listen. All right, I'm very sorry. I want to apologize to everybody that watches my channel. I haven't really been posting videos and that. The madam's been busy. I've been working. You know, I've I've been doing shit in my life and. I miss the grind, man. You know what I'm saying? I got a bang of a video coming out tonight. So to anyone that wants to see a video, do not even stress it. I got a video coming out in the next two days, and it's going to be a banger of a video. I just want to let you guys know that from now on, every single time I post a video, it's going to be a banger of a video. All right? I'm not doing no 50-50 half slack shit. Every video I drop, it must be a banger. So let's get straight to it. Anyways, guys, this weekend, we have UFC Fight Night Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis 2. The rematch will be taking place, guys, and I'm extremely just just thrilled, pumped, excited, exquisitely, aesthetically just manifesting this shitty-ass fight night card. But with all due respect, guys, I will break down this whole card, guys. We're going to be here for about an hour or so, you know what I'm saying? Going to be kicking it with my people in the chat. Guys, if you haven't already, do your boy a favor. Smash the like button in the chat. I apologize for being late as always, but if you ain't late, you ain't even doing this shit for real, so... Let's catch up on the chat. We got Hobnock in the chat. He says Burger Streams are peak genius. I want to see your stove. We might do some uh, some Burger Streams in the future because they do go pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie. West Mass Club says late, <sighs> late, late. What's up? Hi guys. Says part time. I am a part time YouTuber, yes, bro. Oh Jazz, what's up? Sinful. High Dream says yo, what's good in video, bro? How are you, my boy? Have Channel says what's good. The mic is atrocious, but I missed all J streams, bro. If the mic is terrible, I can take the mic out, bro. You know what? I might actually take the mic out. I ain't gonna lie. I bet. Let me know how this sounds because, yeah, I just can't. If I'm, I'm not gonna use the mic if it's fucking terrible, but yeah. All right, let's go. WMC, a hey, sick camera, bro. Thanks, man. Why are you gonna be making fun of my camera, bro? This is how, this is how we do YouTube, bro. All right, I'm taking over the platform. Hey, Hap, hey, take the mic out. I right, bet, bet. Nice. Way better. Way better sound. Way better sound. Dude, I was Max Luxon, bro. I hope Chris Curtis gets shoved in the locker. What's up, uh, Lost Soul MMA? But let's get straight to the first fight, guys. All right, now I'm going to say this right now. Because this card is absolutely atrocious and it's just terrible, I haven't really done any research. I haven't really done any study tape. I haven't really gone through any fights. I haven't studied any fighters. I don't give a shit about this fight night card, but you got the commitment is there, bro. The commitment is there, bro. I'm doing these live streams for you, the preview for the full card breakdown. I'm gonna give you my not study picks, all right? I'm just, I'm just, yeah. You get the fucking point. I haven't studied for this card, but because I'm just a goat at predicting fights, we're still gonna do pretty good. So let's get it. Did you watch LFA? I did not watch LFA, but man, maybe some crazy shit happened in the LFA. LFA is pretty bomb, bro. I like LFA. I have no idea who's fighting this weekend. You're going to see my friend, but let's get straight into it, guys. No more time to waste. I will catch up with chat as I go through every single fight. But yeah, let's get straight to it, man. And I just want to let everybody know, everybody know, pardon me, that in about the next two days, I'm going to drop a video. It's, it's going to be a bang of a video. And uh, that's my new kind of uh, pattern. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to bring out a video that's just terrible and like make a, make, make a couple of videos every week that are just terrible. Like I want to bring out a banger once every two weeks, you know, or once every week, you know, I'll try. So I'm going to still be making videos, of course, bro. You know, this channel will never die. I, I just want people to know that. So we're going to get straight to the first fight, guys. We have an absolutely, oh, just a bang on, man. Just a bang of a fucking fight to open up the main card. I'm thrilled, pumped. Just cannot wait for this absolute fucking bang. I'm surprised this, this isn't the main event. But regardless, we have Melissa Tonya Mullins taking on Nora Cornell. Melissa Mullins is 6-0. and Nora Cornell is 7-1. and For me, guys, I don't give a shit about this fight. I think a lot of people know this. And uh, women's MMA fight is always 50-50. Um, they got Mullins as like... Melissa Mullins right now is like a 3-1 to one favorite. I don't think she should be a 3-1 to one favorite. I think this should just be a pick him, if anything. And because of how big of a favorite this chick is right here, I'm going to go with Nora Cornell. Now, Nora Cornell in her UFC debut, she got a robbery decision victory. She lost her UFC debut, but somehow got the victory. I don't know how the fuck she even won, but she's, she's, you know, she's all right, bro. She's all right. You know, she's got good stand up and 
Melissa Mullins is just, you know, she's got okay stand up as well. I'm just not sold on either of these women. I don't give a shit about this fight. I'm just going to take the underdog in Nora Cornell. I think that Cornell keeps the fight on the feet. I think she lands the better shots. I think she does the better work in the clinch. I think she does the better work at range with the kicks, the punches. I think if you're looking for a nice, random, cheeky underdog, that is just, the line is just way too off. Put, put like, put like 20 cents on Nora Cornell. I think she will get the job done here. And I feel like as long as she doesn't get taken down in this fight, she should be good to win. So give me the underdog in Cora or Cora Norrell. Give me the underdog in Nora Cornell. I fumbled that so badly. And I don't give a shit about this fight. That's just what it is. Um, What's up, Rigo? He says, uh, why do you keep sending me the clip of Payne Tower vaping through his butt? My bad. My bad, G. My bad. Probably because you defended that act, Rigo. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be real. I've, I've never seen the clip of the fucking the butthole vaping clip. And I don't, I don't want to see that shit either, bro. But, uh, yeah, I've never seen it, but. Rigo, you got to stop trolling, bro, because it's a bad troll, bro. It's not even a good troll. But we move on into the next fight, guys. That was the first fight of the card. Just such a, just such an amazing fucking fight to open up the card. But we move on to another fight. This actually looks like a bit of a bang. I'm not going to lie. We have Dylan Burka taking on Shisha Almeida. Now, my prediction for this fight, Dylan Burka versus Shisha Almeida. Now, Dylan Budka, as of right now, I think he's 24 years old. I think he's 7-2. and two. And this guy actually looks like a fucking beast, bro. I'm not going to lie. He is gritty. He's tough. He's a beast of a wrestler. He has pretty pretty mid-tier striking. But this guy is a really solid wrestler. You know, I think he was like a NCAA Div 1 wrestling champion. He had a record of like 87 wins, 5 losses. Actually ridiculous. And I do think he deserves to be the favorite in this fight. But... I'm just going to go with Cesar Almeida, bro. Fuck it. I'm taking another underdog in Cesar Almeida. Look, at the end of the day, you know, Cesar Almeida, he's 36 years old. He, he cannot wrestle for shit. He cannot get taken down. But I feel like, you know, every fight starts off on the feet. And Cesar Almeida is like 10 times a better striker than Dylan Budka. Budka, if he takes him down and out grapples him, then he's probably going to win this fight, no doubt. But I think that, you know, I think Cesar Almeida can do work, man. I think this guy can keep the fight on the feet. Be better in the clinch, be more physical, more stronger, you know, um, land the better kicks throughout the fight, land the better punches. And I think he can knock out Dylan Budka in this fight. I'm not too confident in it. I'm I'm a low confident picking Cesar Almeida, but I like Cesar Almeida here, man. I I don't really care about Dylan Budka. Um, and I don't really care about Cesar Almeida either. This is not like a this is not a fight where I'm picking like a a favorite, like a, a favoritism fighter that I like personally. I don't give a shit about neither of these guys. I'm just saying. That I think because every single fight literally stays on the feet, Cesar Almeida is going to knock out Dylan Budka in about two two rounds, three rounds. I'm predicting a third round TKO for Cesar Almeida, but I think D Dylan Budka, if he uses his grappling, he probably will win this fight. But I like Cesar Almeida to win this fight by TKO. That's what I'm saying. We got Hap Chandler in the, in the chat saying, Peyton Talbot is a chat and vaping through your bomb is fire. Peyton Talbot is a Talbot sexual. Ill hat, we are enemies now. Talbot is a homosexual for that. He's a homo he's a homophobic and a homosexual. Rigo, by the way, no glaze. I never really watch your stuff and I checked it out. You're saying you got funny vids. That's just insane glazing, bro. Just glazing the fuck out of another dude. Hap Chandler, bro. You're a glazer, bro. WMC that I'm just I'm just joking, by the way. So no, you don't need to take that shit personal. We need to give Hap Chandler to Drew Dober for endorsing the rainbow. Exactly. Friendless Norseman. I think Almeida wins this in the second. I got Almeida too, man. I think, like I said, for the third time, this fight will stay on the feet. And Almeida's going to beat the dog shit out of Budka on the feet. And what happens if Dylan Budka can't get his takedowns? He's definitely getting the dog shit beat out of him. So I like his Almeida by TKO. Hey, I appreciate that, Hap. Um, laughing emojis all right gang let's get on to the next fight i want to see what the next fight is because this card is so bad i just want to i just want to see what the next fight is all right say no more we have a bout in the bantamweight division between these absolutely true i wouldn't say trash because this is this is actually a bit of a fun fight a bit of a highly anticipated fight almeida Almeida gasses though and has four years of experience. All Jays, I know, but sometimes that doesn't really mean shit in MMA. Like it just logic doesn't even make sense in MMA, and everybody knows this. I I, I honestly think Cesar Almeida probably will KO him in round one. Like 
getting a win on the contender series nowadays does not mean anything. Honestly. And these are both guys who came from the contender series. But I just think Cesar Almeida is just going to be way more powerful, way more stronger. Like, yes, if this fight hits the mat, then I think Almeida is going to get absolutely cooked and probably probably finished. But I like Cesar Almeida by knockout here, man. You know, I think he does get it done. But we move on to the next fight, guys. We have Gene Matsumoto versus Dan Argeta. Now, like I said, I haven't done no research for this fight, but I want to talk about Gene Matsumoto, man. This guy's 14 and 0, 5 foot 6 for the division, pretty small, but uh, he's a fucking beast, man. This guy has really solid jujitsu skills, great leg kicks, really nice boxing, really crispy. I mean, this guy technically looks really good. I mean, on paper, he's 14 and 0. But Dan Argeta, on the other hand, man, this guy is not the best fighter. But he's tough, he's resilient, he's determined. His nickname is the determined. And I like Dan Argetta in this fight. I really do. I'm picking an, I'm picking another underdog here, bro. I don't give a shit, bro. This is underdog city. This is another underdog city type of card. All right. Now, my reasoning for picking Dan Argetta here is purely off the fact that he has the UFC experience, you know. And I think Dan Argueta is actually kind of decent. Like he doesn't have any striking. We saw that in his last fight against miles johns where he was running into punches with his he was running into punches with his face like he literally was just running into punches wasn't even trying to fucking strike against miles johns he was just running into punches which is something that i just hate but i think he's going to be the more physical fighter in this cage i think he's actually going to be able to take down g matsi mutu and be able to hold him down i think that dan argueta has got some pretty solid jujitsu defense because i just don't see i don't see massi mutu matsumoto are uh, submitting him Maybe this uh, ages, ages terribly, and I get my prediction completely wrong, but I like the UFC experience here for a guy like Dan Argueta. I think that Argueta is improving a lot in his career. I think he's extremely hungry. I think he's um very dominant, too, when he gets in that cage, and he will have the height advantage here. He's one inch taller than Gene Matsumoto. And one thing that I've realized with Dan Argueta is that, you know, when he has the size advantage and the physical advantage, he tends to do very well, man. He tends to be able to kind of control these guys on the ground, very dominant position, like I said, man, Dan Aguet is not the best fighter, but we don't know how G Matsumoto looks like in the UFC yet. You know, like, yes, he might have beat some really good guys outside of the UFC, but it just doesn't, it doesn't, the UFC is a whole different ball game. Now, I will say this. I do believe that Gene Matsumoto, um, I do believe that Dan Argeta is a pretty good matchup for Gene Matsumoto to get a UFC victory in his debut. But I think that Argueta is tough, man. I think this guy wants to get the job done. I think I think this guy will do anything to get the job done. I think he's he's improving a lot. He has a great corner with Cub Swanson and all those guys there. You know, they they play no games. They're straight to the wire. And on the feet, I think that Matsumutsu will have the advantage. But I do believe that Argueta is going to be more physical in this fight. I do believe that Argueta will be able to, you know, secure takedowns in control position. I also believe that he will be able to you know, kind of uh, defend all the submission attempts from Gene Matsumoto. And I just like the physical advantage and the size difference for Dan Argueta, man. I think this guy's actually pretty decent. I think he's got a lot of time in his career to improve. And uh, I'm a big fan of Dan Argueta, man. I think he's got a lot of potential. I think that Matsumoto has a lot of potential too. But I just I just don't like picking guys making their UFC debut, man. That's just what it is. Uh, it's just what it is. So I'm going to pick Dan Argueta based off UFC experience here and having the physical advantage. I do believe that he will be able to defend all the submission attempts from Gene Matsumoto. But we might also see Gene Matsumoto just end up going in there and absolutely destroying Dan Argueta. He might just absolutely dog walk Argueta and submit him like, like Argueta's a bum. I would be extremely surprised. But give me Dan Argueta to win this fight by decision. I think he wins a, a gritty, tough 29-28 unanimous decision victory. But let me catch up on chat. Does Talbot have two moms? I probably he probably does. Hot take: I got Argueta because he's mad strong for the division, and the Gene dude is low key glazed. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm picking Argueta too, bro. You know what I'm saying? Budka is too young at the moment. He should be like 24, 20, 25, 26 for a wrestle heavy style. I don't really necessarily think that's true. I don't really think that's necessarily true. I just think that that's not that's not true. Friendless Norseman. It's it's more just like. Budica seems like a very seasoned wrestler, you know, who's able to get takedowns. But I just don't know if he's going to be able to get past the striking of Almeida. I think Almeida hits pretty fucking hard too, which is going to overwhelm Budka at some point. W or Jays, I haven't seen another YouTuber that's picking Dan the Goat. I like Dan Argetta, man. I think he's actually pretty fucking good. I think if he deserves, 
not deserves. I think if he improves his striking and doesn't run into punches with his face, if he doesn't block punches with his face, then he might actually be able to win certain fights, you know. I'm going with a robbery decision, Apex Classic for Gene. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad prediction, man. I wouldn't be surprised if they give it to Gene. I actually think Gene Matsumutsu probably wins this fight by, like, split decision. It's going to be a very competitive, tough fight, but I got Dan Argetta, man. Give me the experience, Savage, and my boy Dan Argetta. Hobnocker says, Nate Lamway deserves the Emwood pass. I think he kind of does as well, right? I mean, he he's blacker than Jamal Emmers. He's, he's, he's blacker than a lot of UFC fighters, man, so... Like if Nate Lamware said, uh, if Nate Lamware said that, if Nate Lamware said the N word, I would honestly just praise him. Honestly, like I just, I would, I would praise Nate Lamware. I'd be like, dude, you're a, you're a legend, bro. You you're an absolute legend. Nate is black. What do you mean? He 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 is black. He's white on the outside and extremely black on the inside, and he has a black fiance. So you know, he's already a fucking. He's a black Chad. Nate has the N word pass. He does, bro. Baby training coming. He has the better name. The he has. He better name the kid Thomas. Thomas the train land where that'd be so funny, dude. For tank and for the tank engine. Yes, bro. Yes, that'd be funny. Some solution says, how does Steve Ursa get a title fight already? Steve Ursa is gonna beat Pantoja. You just watch. I don't mind that idea, not uh Norse. Ursa got the title fight because McClive is boring and he should never get a title shot ever. Exactly. Did you hear Steve Ur say he did you hear Steve Ursa say he has a male partner? Bro is gay. I don't think that's necessarily true, Rigo. But if you wanna, if you just wanna keep, Rigo's just, I don't know, I don't give a fuck, bro. But Rigo's just straight up trolling, bro. Wait, what is that real? Ursag is sus. No, bro. Rigo's a fucking troll, bro. You have to get used to Rigo, bro. He fucking talks shit, and he's a massive troll, bro. He's an absolute troll, bro. I'm fucking watching you, bro, Rigo. You're a massive troll, bro. <laughs> What's up, Tai Tai Betts? He says, Hugo probably wins, but I'm staying away from this fight. Yep, I agree, Tai Tai. But let's get straight into this fight. We have Pedro Farco, Pedrino taking on Victor Hugo Striker. Now, this is a bit of a worrying fight. This is a bit of a worrying fight for me because Pedro Falco is making his UFC debut um, on like three days short notice. I don't know who this Pedro Falco guy is at all. I just don't know who he is. I don't know if he's an excellent striker. I don't know if he's an excellent grappler. If someone can elaborate to me in the chat, I'll appreciate it. But Victor Hugo, on the other hand, man. Victor Hugo seems like a fucking beast, bro. I'm just, I'm just going to say it right now. I watched this guy's fight on the Contender Series. And, you know, he got a knee bar submission. He's clean with it, man. You know what I'm saying? He has great submission skills, great jujitsu, you know, great scramble abilities. Pretty well-rounded fighter, too. His nickname is Striker. His nickname is Striker, bro. So... He can obviously strike and he can grapple. So he's a pretty well-rounded guy. He's got good jujitsu, like I said. Um, if you give him a knee bar, he's going to knee bar you. If you give him your neck, he's probably going to choke you out. And I just don't know what I see from Pedro Falco, man. I, I literally have never seen this guy before. I like when he was on the scale, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I was like, who the hell is this guy? I've never even seen this guy before. But yeah, he's the guy that's gonna be fighting Victor Hugo. And I think at the end of the day, Victor Hugo will beat this guy up on the feet. I think he probably submits Pedro Falco. I think that Falco is actually going to come into this fight with a, a point to prove, man. I think this could be a really tough fight. This could honestly be a split decision. This could be a really competitive fight, and we just don't know. But I like Victor Hugo here. I think that Victor Hugo lands the better shots throughout the fight. I think he gets the takedowns. I think he wins the scrambles. I think he can most certainly submit Pedro Falco. And I just haven't seen enough from Pedro Falco to be like, yeah, I'm picking him. Because I, I, I didn't even know this guy was... I didn't even know this guy was fighting. I did not know this guy was fighting fucking Victor Hugo, bro. And when I, when I saw Pedro Falco on the scale, I'm like, dude, I don't even know who this guy is. So give me Victor Hugo to win this fight by decision. I think this is going to be a tough fight, a competitive matchup between both these guys. But uh, I like Victor Hugo to win this fight by decision. I think he lands the better shots. I think he's, you know, wins the scrambles. I think he just does better in general. So give me Victor Hugo to win this fight by decision. 30-27, 29-28. Maybe a submission, maybe a ticker. I got Victor Hugo money line. That's all I care about. It could have been the Aussie accent, but it's what I heard. Canada is soy, Rigo. So thought I'd let you know that. Steve Ursa got the title shot because Bedtime Crew manifested it. What a little Bedtime Crew. Uh, Hugo has the better chance. I wouldn't run. I wouldn't run to the bookie on it. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna be. I'm not even betting on this card. This card is terrible. I took two. I took two fighters on this card to bet on. 
and that was it because I just fucking don't like this card, bro. What's good? What's good with you, Anakin, brother? Like, how are you doing, Anakin, bro? It's great to see you, my guy. Striker. Hugo decision. I think Hugo gets the job done too, man, by decision. Falco might Falcon punch his ass into the next year because he's got a decent record. That's true, man. Yeah, he, he, it, it's a bit suspicious, right? Like, I look at him, and I'm like, damn, like, he looks like a fucking tank, but yeah. All Jays probably jerks off to Whitaker fights. You're actually disgusting, Lost Soul, and, and uh, I'm about to time you out, bro. You're, you're so lucky I don't time you out, bro. <sighs> the day will come, my boy. Don't, don't be saying disgusting shit like that in my chat, bro. Come on, bro. C cool humor from Lost Soul. It's disgusting humor. Dis disgusting. Watch your fucking mount, you. Watch your fucking mount, me. Or Jays, what's your reaction if Ursa gets carried and Petoja hits him with the Izzy Costa and Shavkat sleeps JDM and he moats on him? What's the vibe? I'll probably just delete my channel at that point. I'm not going to lie. Um, we should have, we should have had side you cool versus Hugo would have been better. Dude, side you cool versus Hugo would have been a bang of a fight. That would have actually been a, that would have been the, uh, that, that would have been the best fight on the card. And, uh, they need to bring side you cool back to the UFC. I mean, side you was absolutely smoking Saeed Nurmagomedov before he got submitted. I mean, he's fucking underrated, bro. I need Saeed, Saeed Yukub back in the UFC, bro. He, he literally got cut for no reason, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, Chamaya gonna submit Whitaker in Shabar, probably. But if he doesn't, man, Whitaker's gonna actually Whitaker's actually going to smoke him. Lol, I hit a nerve because it's true. Not really, but like, if that's what you think, Lol Solden. Sure, my boy. If you compare their records, they are similar. But Hugo has more fights, and Hugo looks like a little cleaner plus the short notice. That's true, bro. That's true. Yep, I I'm mid tier confident in Victor Hugo. Um, Saeed Nomagometo fighting Montel Jackson in Saudi now. That is going to be a bang of a fight. I got Saeed, but that is a fire fucking matchup. That's that, those are the type of fights that I want to see, man. And Montel's got a pretty good chance, but I will pick Saeed. But that's a fucking banger, man. See, that's just a great fight. We need we need more great fights. All right, guys. We've made it. We've made it. We've made it. We've made it, guys. We've made it. You don't even know what's next. You don't even know what's next. You don't even know what's next. You ain't even know. It's dumb truck time. It's dumb truck time, fellas. Let's fucking go. So uh, let me catch up on chat real quick. Hugo has a massive head. He does. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually pretty scared that Pedro Falco is just gonna KO him out cold. You know what I'm saying? Usman does everything Whitaker does, but better, not gonna lie. And that is a bang of a fight for the win. Did you see Jeff Molina is back against Josh Van? That's a fucking lie, Rigo. That's a straight up lie, bro. You're actually a troll, bro. Let me let me look it up right now, bro. But I bet you I bet you you're trolling, bro. Let me see this, bro. I bet, bro, if you're wasting my time, bro, I'm finna fucking boot you off stream, bro. This man is trolling me, bro. Bro, you're actually a troll, Rigger, bro. You're a fucking disgrace to society, Rigger. Go home. You're a troll, bro. You're a troll, bro. Why would you do that to me, bro? I was ready to see... I was ready to see <laughs> some violence, bro. All Jays came when Whitaker dropped Canada and was landing his zesty jab. Just stop. Just stop it, bro. Please. Just stop. I just need you to stop, bro. No, nah, we need to give Molina to that obese Dagestani. I got Bunda Monster by decision. Bunda Monster. Oh, my days, bro. I'm so happy. Cub Swanson fighting Philly now. I know, dude. That's such a banger, bro. I cannot wait. You still think Manel has, has still has a chance? Manel, Manel against who? Manel Cap against Pantoja? I don't think so. Nah, I swear, bro. Nah, you fucking lying, bro. Stop it. Didn't Norma outbox that boxer chick? Yeah, but that boxer chick probably wasn't even that good. Let's be real. But let's get straight into this fight, guys. We got Norma Dumont, big bunda, dump truck, juicy, sweaty bunda. Whew. Versus Jermaine, the Iron Lady Durandamy. Jermaine Durandamy. Now, this is actually a kind of fucking interesting fight. I'm not going to lie. 
as of right now, the odds, um, Jermaine Durand, I can't even speak. Norman DeMont is coming into this fight as a two to one favorite. And I don't really necessarily agree with the odds, man. For me, my prediction here, I'm going with Jermaine Durand me, bro. I'm going with Jermaine Durand me. Look, I'm just going to have to talk about it. Norman DeMont, you know, she's a great fighter. I love watching her fight in all terms of aspects of the sport, you know, physical features, mental features, the sport itself. I just, I just love watching her fight. You know, she's such an aesthetic, exquisite, such an entertaining fighter to watch, if you know what I mean. But I think she's going to be outmatched here by J Jermaine Duranemi. I think that Jermaine Duranemi is honestly, I think she's honestly going to beat the dog shit out of Norman DeMont in this fight. Now, I will say this. Jermaine Duranemi, she's 40 years old as of right now. She's coming off a pregnancy with a baby. So God bless Jermaine Duranemi. She had a baby. Um, I wish nothing but the best for her. But I think she's pretty fucking hungry, man. And I think she's extremely talented. I mean, we look at the losses that Jermaine Duranemi's had in the UFC. She lost to Amanda Nunes twice, the women's goat. And Amanda Nunes is not even a woman, so it doesn't matter. And... I don't think she's lost to anyone else in the UFC. And she's beaten Raquel Pennington. She beat Holy Holm. She, she fucking submitted Juliana Pena. She put Juliana Pena out cold. And Pena was somehow a champ in, in the UFC. I like Jermaine Duranemi here. Look, Norma Dumont, she's good. She has an insane fucking gat. But I just think she's going to be outmatched here, man. Like, I think Norma Dumont's actually a really solid women's MMA fighter. I think she could potentially, you know crack the, the top 10, the top five at one point. But uh, I think Norma DeMont, you know, I think she's going to be a little bit drained from the weight cut here. Now, she did make 135, which I like to see, but that's going to take a toll on her, man. And if Norma DeMont can't grapple Jermaine Duranemi against the cage this whole fight and take her down and shit, I think that Jermaine Duranemi is going to beat the fuck out of her straight up because Norma DeMont, you know, she she can strike with women. She likes to strike with women. But she is mostly a grappler. You know, she finds her most confidence when grappling fighters. You know, Chelsea Chandler, she took her down like multiple times in that fight. Danielle Wolf, she took her down multiple times in that fight. M Macy Chasson, she didn't win that fight, but she's constantly grappling in that fight. Norman Dumont is a grappler at heart. And I appreciate that, you know, because we get to see the better angles of the, the cake, if you know what I'm saying. But yeah, man, I think if she tries to shoot a takedown on Jermaine Durandamy, I think Durandamy is going to stuff the takedown, head kick her, break her nose, and just beat the dog shit out of her. I mean, Norma Dumont, Norma Dumont got knocked out by Megan Anderson. Jermaine Durandamy would absolutely mog fucking Megan Anderson, brutally mog her. And um, the fact that the Jermaine Durandamy is coming in as an underdog, like, that's that's really tempting to just sprinkle money on her. Now, me personally, I would never bet on a women's MMA fight, even though I have a couple times, but... I think she's a really solid underdog, man. You know, Jermaine Durandamy, she's got excellent takedown defense, you know, unless she's fighting Nunes, and Nunes takes down the whole division, if you know what I mean. And she's a world-class kickboxer, man. She's got great kicks, great punches. She does have knockout power. She's nasty as fuck on the feet. And she's got submission skills. She submitted Juliana Pena in her last fight. So, although that was three years ago and she's been extremely inactive, I think she gets it done, man. I think she's kind of... I think what's kind of happened um, with Jermaine Durandamy is I feel like she's looked at the division ever since Amanda Nunes retired, and she's thinking like, oh, man, like, Nunes is gone. My only losses were to Nunes. I'm pretty sure that I can clear out the whole division. I mean, I'm pretty sure Jermaine Durandamy looks at Raquel Pennington as a champ, and she's like, I beat Raquel Pennington like fucking five years ago. I, I, I would KO her if we fought again. I think that's the mindset of Jermaine Durandamy. I think a lot of a lot of these women's fighters, because they know that Nunes has retired and they're not scared of like a fucking man who's the champion in their division, I think they're gonna realize that hey, like we could I can make a pretty good run for the title. And I think Jermaine Durandamy keeps his fight on the feet. I think she wins this fight via 30-27 decision. Like the only way Norma Dumont wins this fight is is if she gets takedowns. And you know. Like call me like call me goofy, but like I'm actually kind of excited for this fight. I'm I'm excited to see the return of Jermaine Durand me. I'm excited to see Norman Dumont back as always. And I think this is gonna be a tough fight for both of them. I think this is actually gonna be a pretty in, not insane, but I think it's gonna be a pretty fun women's MMA fight. I just wanna see I just wanna see uh Jermaine Durand me beat the dog shit out of Norman Dumont for some reason. You know what I mean? And I'm not even the biggest Jermaine uh Durand me fan, but Give me Jermaine Duranemi to win this fight by decision. I think she stuffs the takedowns. I think she keeps the fight in the middle of the octagon. And I think she absolutely beats the dog shit out of JDR. 
So I'm a smart man, bro. I'm a smart man. I know how to predict fights. I know how to read fights. I know how to look at fights. I am one of the best predictors on MMA YouTube. You can say I'm, you can like, you can say I'm not, but the numbers don't lie, bro. Go check all my other prediction videos. I've absolutely crushed many cards. Okay. I've, I've fucked up on a lot of cards. I've had a lot of terrible cards, but I've also had amazing cards where I've gotten like one or two fights wrong. So <laughs> fucking doubt me. Yeah. You can fucking doubt me all you want. Yeah. But I got Jermaine Duran me by decision. I think she beats a dog shit out of Norma Dumont. And uh, I think we see the Bunda go to sleep. So I like Jermaine Duran me. Um, The biggest liar in YouTube MMA. Yeah, Rigo, bro. Rigo's a fucking troll, bro. You just have to, you just have to relax with Rigo. Jermaine has had a long layoff. Hope she wins. She's going to absolutely smoke her. She, bro, must have watched my pick video before this. I watched like a couple. I, I watched like a couple of your picks when I was at work, but then the man had to dip. But I'm always tuning in, Ty Ty, bro. But yeah, I, most, bro, bro, most people on MMA YouTube who have a fucking brain are going to pick Jermaine Durand me. Like, if you pick Norma Demont, like, you're not educated on the sport. That's just what it is. Um, what's up, Mason? What's good with you, bro? Um, how can you pick against Bunda? Bro, I'm sorry, dude. She's just, I think Jermaine beats her up. What's up, Hap? Oh, Jays, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You made me happy when skies are gray. What's good with you, Gibbons, my boy? What's good, Mason? Norma Demont is so hot. I'll pick her. Dude, she's 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 hot, but she's not like a fucking, like, you're just absolutely simp maxing, Mason. You're just simp maxing, my boy. How the frick is Norma going to make 135? Well, she made 135, so. I can't wait to see that Bunda tomorrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna be real like that. I like I, I got no shame, bro. I don't give a shit, my boy. I don't care. Um, have Chandler start streaming soon, bro. Yeah, for real, bro. JDR is going to win. Women's MMA fighters don't go on win streaks. We need champion Norma. Yeah, but I think I think JDR wins though. Uh hey Mason, what's up, Mason? Mason streams coming soon, bro. Hell yeah, bro. Jermaine hasn't fought since 2020. That's true, but. She's still fucking whooping on all these women's fighters. Or Jay's picking against Bunda's Loki disgraceful, to be honest. How could you? Bro, I'm thinking with my brain. I'm thinking logically, bro. I cannot. I cannot. All right. All right. Enough yapping, bro. Read my mess. Read my love message already. I got you, Gibbons, bro. I agree with Vortex uh, F picks. Read chat. Bro, I'm giving out the best picks on MMA YouTube. Relax. Norma is hot as fuck. She's not, bro. She's bad. I think Norma's bad, but she's not like a fucking... She's not like a... She's not like insanely fucking hot. Jermaine choked out former champion Pena. Exactly. Or Jay's bro, I love you, but stop yapping and read chat. I am reading chat, bro. I don't know. I don't know what you want more from me. I'm giving you guys detailed predictions on every single fight on the card. And I'm reading chat on a consistent basis. Relax, people. Relax. I will catch up on chat. All right. Like, relax, my boy. Sheppy, a much better dog. I agree. I mean, they're both probably the best dogs on the card, though. JDR robbed Holly. Yeah, I mean, she's dirty. I mean, she's a, a, a pretty dirty fighter, right? Like, she fucking, she, like, sucker punched Holly home, like, multiple times after the rounds ended. So, she's a little bit of a cheating dog, but I think that's going to help her win this fight. I think she grabs onto the fucking cage, gets up from takedowns, and does her thing and wins. We don't need 30 minutes of WMMA predictions, bro. Read chat. I mean, this is a hype. This is a banger. This is a freaking banger, man. A banger of a high-level women's MMA matchup. So, uh, come on, man. You're the man. I appreciate you, Mason, bro. You're an OG of the channel, my boy. So, much love to you, bro. Ready for 300? I am most certainly ready for 300. I can't wait. Jack Jenkins' next opponent. Who do you think? I think him versus uh, Dennis Bazooka, for sure. Who is Dan Hooker going to fight next? I think they give him Benil Darius. The only banger is the banging of Norma's cheeks clapping. Nice. USC 300 main event. Holy home. Yeah, that's fucking ridiculous. Fucking Dana White. Guys, we've got another fight for you. USC 300. Holly home. And he's like looking at the camera like we're fucking excited, bro. Like, are you fucking serious? Are you actually serious, bro? How did Jay-Z for the bone for the duffel? Yeah. Guys, we got 10, 10 viewers in chat. Shout out to all my people in chat, my 10 viewers. If you haven't already, make sure you do your boy a favor and smash the like button. We're out here bringing out the live stream for you guys, so I appreciate everybody as always. Don't forget to go ahead and smash the like button. And, um, yeah, bro. Mason who? Hooker should fight 
No, nah, you ain't you ain't fooling me, boy. For real. God, Benilla's done. I don't know if he's done, man. He just doesn't have a chin. What's next for BSD? I say Dober. I think him and Dober's a banger, man. So hype, 300 and bros running through Cody Brundage. Yeah, hopefully, man. Holy Holm, do your best Colby impression. I mean, the guy's just a scrub, you know. He just, he walks around Walmart and just, you know, he calls out people and he sucker punches people on the street. I mean, the guy's just a, the guy's just a scumbag. The guy's just a scumbag, you know. Um, Jorge Street, Judas Mazzardo, you know, he's just, he's just a criminal. He's just a criminal. That was a pretty bad impression, but let me know what you think, man. I'm trying to fucking prove these impressions, so it is what it is. BSD versus Benil next. Yeah, I guess we can make that fight, but I don't really want to see that fight, to be honest. Jermaine sled that dude. Yo, Anakin. Bro, Nickel winning by finish in the first 7.5 minutes is minus 250. Wild. Ooh, Anakin, I like that too. Hooker versus BSD. That's a banger. Nah, Anakin, remember when you tried to match up Talbot and Uma? Let's make BSD versus Turner to end BSD for good. True, man. True. Hooker has taken so much damage. He has, bro. He has. What's good? How are you, Ben? Sounds more like Morono. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, I would. I'm not gonna disagree with that. Wonder if Ferguson will fight in the UFC again. Maybe Clay Guida, Yuri, or Rackage. Hap Turner gonna have a war with Moikano, but that's not happening anytime soon. Not much. Anakin Skywalker. I don't know how to add people, man, but I'm good though, bro. How about you, Aljo or Kato? I got. I got uh, probably Aljo, but I might pick Kato. I'm still 50-50. Thoughts on Greg Hardy going on a. Thoughts on Greg Hardy going on a tank it from getting laid off Walmart. Greg Hardy is a just disgrace. Turner sleeps Moy Connor in one round. Probably. He actually probably will. I'm not going to lie. Almost dropped a message about Grasso. Then remember what you said on the internet lives forever. True. True. Well, you might as well just, you might as well just fucking say it, bro. Uh, Turner would sleep BSD in one. It would be so beautiful. Um, Hap BSC will be back. You will see. Hello, OJ is my beautiful brother. What's good with you, Millie? W Millie in the chat. Let's go, my boy. It's over for BSD. It's not over for BSD, bro. You're just you're actually a mad fucking. You're actually a you're actually a crazy BSD hater, bro. Why do you hate BSD so much, bro? He's gonna be back. All right. He got carried by Pore. It is what it is. Pore got knocked out by Michael Johnson and he came back, bro. I don't know why this guy hates BSD so much, bro. Like, I, I picked Poray to KO BSD, but I'm not fucking over here hating on BSD. I just don't get the hate, bro. Um, Turner's very dangerous. He is very dangerous. Greg Hardy for karate combat. <laughs> yeah, dude, I want to see that for sure. Then my best winner of Turner Moicano. What's up, J.A.? Mason, I agree. Bro, if I say what I was thinking, it'll be so over. Yeah, I, don't, I probably don't want you to say it either because you'll probably get my channel fucking having no chance of getting monetized in the future. I'm sick and tired of all the lost soul disrespect. Lost Soul deserves all the disrespect he gets, bro. I'm going to shove Lost Soul in a fucking locker, bro. Be careful, my boy. I'm sick and tired of the disrespect, bro. That dude, Benoit, was sleeping. Nobody's more oppressed in society than Grasso fans. Not coping, but if anyone has been on antibiotics, you know how shitty you feel. Lol. Yeah, exactly. Like, look, I picked Poirier. I'm going to say it for the fourth time because I'm gloating. I picked Poirier to KO BSD. And even then, BSC looked fucking great in that fight. He was taking down Poray. I mean, Poray was just shooting guillotines like an idiot. But, um, dude, BSD was walking him down. Like, BSD was looking really good. It's just Poray's elite. Dustin, Dustin is really good. Holy shit, the chat is going crazy, my boy. Dustin is really good, even if I still wonder um, if he can do anything to Islam. I would have pulled out of the fight, to be honest. True. I hate BSD because Anakin glazes him every day and he tried to make Umar versus Talbot to sabotage Talbot and I want to sabotage BSD. That's that's just some that's uh, that's some childish shit, my boy. All right, real talk. I'm doing all right, man. Can't wait for Allen versus Craig 2 tomorrow. Manly for Bohamon does. Yeah, I can't wait as well. I can't wait to see my boy Court McGee, bro. The fucking the goat himself, Court McGee. I hate to I hate to tell y'all this, but BSD just didn't see red. If I had seen red, I would have subbed for it. Yeah, that's true. No, you're right. You're right. You're right, Gibbons. You're right, for sure. I might train at the same gym bar Mondas trains at. Are you, are you from Chicago? Is that where they're from? Chicago? That'd be dope. And can I have had zero hype whatsoever for the card tomorrow? I'm, I'm, I don't really mind it. Like, I just can't wait to watch some fights. What kind of antibiotics? Jack Della had staff, and he still KO'd Gilbert Burns, all right? And you guys want to hate on Jack Della. He's a fucking Chad. He's going to KO Shavka, okay? 
I don't, I don't want to hear no bullshit about it. Oh, Shavkat gonna side. Shavkat gonna be Shavkat. Like a Shavkat, dude. Shavkat is amazing. Shavkat will be a future champion. But people are acting like Jack Della can't be a future champion. Like Jack Della can most certainly beat Shavkat and become a champ. I'm just gonna say it right now. Hap, it's not glaze. I'm just giving my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you guys gotta chill, bro. You know what I'm saying? Might just go play airsoft for the first time instead of watching this card, maybe. I guess Dustin gonna smoke Islam's overconfident stand-up fighting ass. I don't know about that, man. How tough is Jack Della? Gets his arm broken right away and still pulled off his finish. Yeah, he's a Chad, bro. He's Australia. Australians are built different, bro. Anna, can you try to sabotage our uh, Talbot? I was the first to call poor K on my channel in O'Malley decision. I mean, good, good for you, Ty Ty, bro. Like, it's not, it's not, it's not a competition, bro. You know, you know what I'm saying, bro. It's not a competition, but. A lot, a lot of people had the same predictions as you, my boy, including myself. Bro, I think Pore beats Islam. Yeah, exactly. Chris Curtis looks white to me. He is white. He's a fucking white liberal. Brendan Allen is more black than Chris Curtis. Yes, sir. Laughing emoji. Yeah, they are from Chicago. Um, Armin finished Charles. Armin gonna finish Charles, uh, hopefully. New Forgiato killing it like Chicago. Jack Della is a legit animal. He ain't quitting. Shavkat, Jack Della is so good. It's a bang of a fight. Like, that's a... Like, if that's a pay-per-view... If, if that's, like, a pay-per-view main event, I wouldn't even complain. Like, I'm gonna just be real. I wouldn't even complain. Hap, I didn't... I didn't, man. I'm just giving him matchups that the fans would love. JDM beats everyone, unfortunately. He will. He literally will, bro. Like, you guys can... You guys can hate... You guys can hate on my boy Jack Della, but he's gonna keep knocking out your favorite fucking fighters, bro. I've been watching Jack Dellis before he got to the UFC. And I was like, damn, this guy, this guy might actually like be really good. And let's see where he's at now. Welterweight on its way to randomly gain on on its way to randomly gaining all the prospects one day in 2020. Anakin Skywalker re, uh, respect. Let's squash the beef. Australians are real men, tough as fuck. Exactly, bro. Mason knows what's up, bro. Um Hamza, I know he went up. Shavkat, JDM, Ian, Gary, MVP. Especially especially those boys from WA and Queensland. Says the guy bragging. I know, but this is this is my channel, bro. Like, I'm gloating because I am the GOAT at predicting MMA fights. And a lot of people know that. You know what I'm saying? So, I have every right to brag. Um, Who you guys got? Nicholas Dolby or Renat? I'm very curious. I'm picking Dolby, man. I'm picking Nicholas Dalby, bro. I think Dalby gets up from the takedowns and outstrikes Renat on the feet. And it's crazy for me to say this because I'm the biggest Renat Fakradin of Glazer, okay? If you've known me for a long time, I was a, I'm was still a massive Renat fan. But I think, honestly, Nicholas Dalby might be a bad matchup for him, bro. Nicholas, the LGBTQ soy boy, might destroy Russian Chad Renat Fakradinov. Curtis and Jones are two of the whitest black dudes ever, exactly. Dang, I offered to squash the beef and Anakin just ignore me. That's crazy. Maybe he's doing something, bro. You know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe he's just doing something. Actually, I was the first person to predict Corey. Poirier by yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's not a fucking competition, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have no one has to fucking like I'm just here, bro. I'm just here bragging and, and gloating because it's my channel, bro. I get to do what I want, but yeah, it's not like a fucking it's not like a race or a competition. Like, oh, I did this first. I did this. like it doesn't fucking matter, bro. <laughs> like you just make yourself look goofy as hell. A lot of people think Della KOs Leon. I think Della versus Leon's a pretty tough fight. I ain't gonna lie. Um, let's squash it. Don't be mad, bro, because your lookalike featured in my last uh every fight to make vid. Don't be mad, bro, because your uh, lookalike featured in my last every fight to make vid. I actually don't I don't even know what you're talking about, Tai Tai, bro. I don't even yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about, bro. I really don't. Like I just like you, you sound kind of salty, bro. Like, for no reason, bro. It's not that big of a deal, Ty Ty. Jones was mad because DC dropped an N bomb and not an A ball. It's true. Rigo is the king of MMA YouTube. That sounded better in my head, shaking my head. Uh, Anakin, let's go. Um, Rigo makes the best shorts. I'm picking Islam to KO Dustin. No hate to Dustin. I think he might KO Dustin too. All Jays, what are you doing if Leon Frunky KOs Jack Dylan screams at, at his sleeping body and says, glaze him now on the mic? It is what it is. I predicted Poirier KO when the fight was announced. Real Poirier fan from Lafayette. All right, bro. Yeah. Good for you, my boy. Good for you, my boy. Good shit, Tata, bro. Good shit, Tata. Now, Skywalker KO is crazy. 
Um, it's not a competition. I have the right to brag. We can all brag, bro. You know what I'm saying? Islam has zero reason to not just take him down. He's not gonna land a head kick because Pori isn't five foot six. Exactly. I appreciate you, my guy Mason. Vortex MMA. Of course, he could sub him, but anything is possible. Goofy is hopping chats to brag whenever your pick hits. True. But I, I I don't be doing all that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's true. I mean, unless someone was talking shit before before the fight happened, saying this guy's going to lose and then they win, that's when I go on people's chats and say, like, what are you going to say now because the guy won? But yeah, bro, it's, it's like, bro, is just like fucking, like, what's the what's the deal, my boy? Tie tie, bro. It's not, there's no big deal here, bro. <laughs> like, it's fucking stupid that we're even going on about it. Islam has improved his striking so much. He might not rely on his submissions to beat Dustin. Um, Rigo shorts are funny as fuck. They are. Rigo's got some pretty good shorts. Why does Cole McGee have a Dagestani beard? I mean, he is Dagestani. Islam versus Armin will be an amazing fight. I wouldn't think Islam would be dumb enough to stand and trade with Poirier. Exactly. But enough, enough of reading chat, bro. All right. I'm going I'm to read the chat off of this pick. Let's get straight into the featured prelim. We have Cole McGee taking on Alex Morono. This is going to be a fun fight, man. This is going to be a fun fight. I'm not going to lie. For me, I like Alex Morono here. I'm not going to spend too much time on this on this pick. I think Alex Morono is the way better fighter. I think that Colt McGee is fucking old. I like Colt McGee. I have a lot of respect for Colt McGee. I think he's an actual fucking OG. He's just a gangster. But um, he's old, man. He's fucking 40 years old. He, he's been knocked out in his last two fights. And um, he's a point fighter. And Alex Morono is also a point fighter. And I think Alex Morono is a better point fighter. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I like Alex Morono by decision here. I think Alex Morono is going to land the better shots throughout the whole fight. I think Alex Morono might get a KO here, honestly. But um, I, I like Morono by decision, and that's just what it is. I don't even need to spend too much time on this fight. Honestly, I don't I don't even need to spend too much time on this fight. I'm going with Alex Morono by decision. I like the money line here. The money line, the money line has been absolutely squashed out. I mean, the money line has been hammered. But it is what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really matter. We still taking it regardless. Um, I like Alex Moreno here. Cole McGee's good, but he's old. He's washed, obviously, and he's a point fighter. And you cannot, you cannot try and point fight with Moreno because Moreno is just gonna beat you. But that's my prediction. Give me Alex Moreno by decision. It's not, it's not really a fight that needs to be explained anymore. I like Alex Moreno by decision. Yeah, I think he's the way better fighter. I think he's a crafty, gritty, wobbly, clobbly fucking veteran, and I think he just lends the better shots throughout the whole fight. So give me Alex Moreno by decision. You know what it is. But let me catch up on chat real quick. Bragging after your picks. After, bragging after your picks. His is goaded. I do that all the time. It's fire. You win some, you lose some. There's no there's no shame in bragging, bro. You know what I'm saying? McGee just signed a new deal with the UFC. Nice, man. I mean, he should probably retire after this fight, but. Armin fought Islam when he was 22. Why is this court still in the UFC? Exactly, man. It's pretty fucking crazy if you think about it. OJ's, we're typing mad stuff in chat because the picks are the picks are boring. Read chat. OJ's, we're typing mad stuff. Yeah, true. 30 minutes of reading chat. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm going to read chat for the rest of the fucking... If you guys want to keep typing in the chat, I'm going to just read chat. Alex Moreno decision. I agree. Imagine how much better he has got. Chill, bro. I'm just trolling. It's all love, bro. 30 minutes of prelim fight predictions. Hey, bro, this is a fucking, you know, like I'm I'm breaking down these bangers, bro. This should be a good fight for real. No more picks. Um, KO more likely. I'm parlaying the money line. Moreno, Moreno last fight. I don't blame him for losing to Buckley, seeing Buckley has looked good lately. Exactly. And he didn't get finished either. Like he went to a decision. Who wins in the street boxes or MMA fighters? Probably MMA fighters. Uh, if there's no shame, then don't try to shame people for it. I know, but I'm not. Sh I'm not shaming. I'm not shaming anybody. I'm not shaming anybody. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even shaming anybody. So it doesn't make sense. Bragging is mad fire, in my opinion. Especially if everyone doubts you. I brag so much on Pore One. It was more just people saying that BSD is the real deal and shit. I'm like, dude, Pore is ten levels above fucking BSD, and BSD is good. So that what does that make Pore? That makes Pore elite. But let's get straight into the next fight, guys. We have Trevor Peak versus Charlie Campbell. This should be a fucking interesting fight, man. I'm not going to lie. Guys, let me know what your prediction is down in the chat below. 
Man, this is a tough one because Trevor Peak is live here, man. You know what I mean? He's he's going to be in this fight for the for, for the whole three rounds. He's got an iron chin, and uh, he's just a fucking scary guy, man. He's a meth head. He's a, he's fucking insane in the head. He's a based Christ pilled enjoyer, which I respect. And fuck him, man. I'm going with Trevor Peak. I'm going with Trevor Peak. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm going with Trevor Pig in this fight. I think Trevor Pig wins this fight by knockout. Look, in terms of skill, I think that Charlie Campbell is way more skilled than Trevor Pig. I think Charlie Campbell could KO Trevor Pig. I think Charlie Campbell can absolutely beat the dog shit out of Trevor Pig in this fight. But the thing is, is Trevor Pig just eats everything that gets thrown his way, and he's always walking you down, and he's always like basically going to KO you. So. Man, I'm going to take Trevor Peak here by third round KO. I think Charlie Campbell is a guy that kind of has to be perfect for 15 minutes straight. I think that Charlie Campbell's got a pretty good chin. Like, he's only been KO'd once, and that was, like, when he threw himself into the fire on the Contender Series where he made a rookie mistake. But I think Trevor Peak has the better chin. I think he's more of a dog. I think he has more heart, more grit, better, better durability. I think he's more explosive than Charlie Campbell. I think he's way more dangerous than Charlie Campbell. and Although Charlie Campbell's really good, he's he's very talented. He's got a lot of potential. You know what I'm saying? He's very clean with the striking, pretty good boxing, nice leg kicks. He's he's a good fighter, Charlie Campbell. Trevor Peak is dangerous, man. He's not the most skilled Trevor Peak, but he's making improvements in his career. And um, if this turns in, if this turns into a brawl, I think that Trevor Peak might absolutely KO Charlie Campbell out cold. So I don't think anyone can be blaming me for picking Trevor Peak here. I think that Peak will find the chin at some point. Um, like I said, man, I think, I think Charlie Campbell deserves to be the favorite. I think he is really good. I think he's really talented, but sometimes shit just doesn't work in MMA, man. And I think at the end of the day, we're going to see Trevor Pete get a knockout here. I think he gets a third round knockout. I think Charlie Campbell is going to be perfect for like the whole fight. And then he's going to, he's going to zig when he should have zagged and Trevor Pete's going to find one on his chin and put him out cold. So maybe I'm kind of over-exaggerating here. I do believe Charlie Campbell wins this fight because he's a lot better. But I'm taking the dog shot in Trevor Peak. You know, he's he's going to be there for the whole fight. He's going to be in Charlie Campbell's face the whole fight. He's impossible to KO. This guy throws fucking standing hammer fist. How can you pick against Trevor Peak? Um, I got Trevor Peak by knockout in this fight. It's just that simple. You know, I I, I don't really mind Ch Charlie Campbell winning because I think he's actually very talented. He's very good. He's very skilled. But Trevor Peak is way too dangerous for me to not pick against him, man. You know, Peak kind of looked like shit in his last fight, but I think he's taken more of a patient approach in his in his uh, fights, which I like. But regardless, man, give me Trevor Peak by knockout. I think he knocks this guy the fuck out. Yeah, I think he KOs him. Yeah, not much to say. Give me Trevor Peak by knockout. If I get this fight wrong, I don't really care because it's like a trash fucking card so i don't really i don't care if i do negative numbers on this card i just don't and i think to be honest with you peak will probably win i'm not gonna lie so give me trevor peak by knockout but let me catch up back on chat i predict moicano subs turn not a bad prediction barkley pick hit lol luke took a giant bag from kraus yes sir we picked barkley over here because we're smart are uh, people still curbing for BSD blaming staff? True. I got Turner by round one KO, to be honest, and I think it's an easy pick. Trevor Peak by Hammer Fist. Campbell rushes too much in his fights. True. Peak isn't the call here. Campbell by round one KO. I don't really think so, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, Campbell is good. He's very he's very good. He's he's talented. He does have knockout power, but nobody has KO Trevor Peak in the, in his career. And he doesn't have a he doesn't have a glass door. He's got a granite fucking chin, dude. I predict I will continue to have no job, no car, no bitches, no license, no bets hitting, no friends, no swag, no drip, no moments. I've made my parents proud, no hobbies, no skills, no interesting facts about, about me. I feel for you, Gibbons, bro. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you after this stream ends. I can't pick a Chris Duncan victim. Dude, Rigo is on the same path as me, bro. I'm not picking a Chris Duncan victim, bro. It's just not happening. OJ, seriously, bro, stop whacking off the Whitaker. You're a silly goose, bro. You're a silly goose, Lawson. So this is a this one is a machine and nerve, and it has its mind concluded. Campbell last win wasn't even a good win. It was against Reyes, exactly, man, exactly. But he looked good in that fight, but not not enough for me to pick him here. I invented the victim meme, lol. 
and that dude lost to Mike Perry. Who are you talking about? Are you talking about Charlie Campbell lost to Mike Perry? Did Charlie Campbell lose to Mike Perry? I don't think he lost to Mike Perry, but if he did, Jesus Christ is my sunshine, my only sunshine. He makes me happy when skies are great. Amen to that. Lost Soul is right. Lost Soul is a Rigo victim. Lost Soul fucking exposed himself. Go watch, go watch a Justin Mack short. You know, he completely exposed himself. Trevor Peak, goat. He is the fucking goat, dude. I love me some Trevor Peak. Lost Soul inserts Shapul bottles, Talbot Sullins for Armin's fights. Exactly, dude. Exactly. This is this one is but flesh and faith is the more deluded true. Pig by KO. I think so too. God, dude, I think Pig is going to... Dude, I think Pig's the main event, to be honest. Pig by smelling barbecue. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Imagine if the MMA gods give Campbell a win because he's with Ray Longo. I don't think he's with Ray Longo. I think he's... You, maybe he is with Ray Longo, but I, he, I, don't know if he's, I don't know if he's training at Ray Longo's gym, but maybe. Tony versus Renat up next and Longo versus... And Longo, Jim ain't been doing it hot right now. True. Look like Sergey Spivak. The guy on the right does look like Sergey Spivak. I mess with Vortex MMA. Trevor Pig via the Holy Spirit. Exactly. He's cool. I think Sean O'Malley will snipe Marab's slow heads and mediocre striking and KO him. True. I think so too. Bro, I was kidding with my prediction message. Thank you for the prayer though. I appreciate you, bro. Always. Um, Reyes lost to Mike Perry. Exactly. Marab is getting KO'd and nobody going to tell me no. Exactly. All days would blow his load if he met Whitaker. Bro, you're saying that you're saying that because I'm Australian. Like, what what if I don't like Whitaker, bro? You know what I'm saying? I love Whitaker, but what if I didn't like Whitaker, bro? You know what I'm saying? Campbell trains at Wyman and Longo's gym. True, true, true. I agree, Anakin. I'm so tired of these people acting like Mirab doesn't have slow hands and bad striking and can't get countered strike by O'Malley. Exactly. I predict Sean will counter strike Marab. Um, follow him on the ground and, and they will begin to fr okay. All right, bro. Vortex, I agree. Marab is getting KO'd. All right, guys. Lost Soul is so obsessed with Rob. Yeah, I mean, he's he's the one kind of being obsessed with Rob. But let's get straight into this fight, guys. We have Lucas Brzezewski taking on Valter Walker. I don't really know how to predict this fight, man. I'm going to mm, I'm gonna go with Valter Walker, man. I'm going to go with Valter Walker by KO. You know, Lucas Brzezewski is really, in, really uh, just... A very intriguing pick because I do believe that he might actually win this fight. I think Bresky honestly can win this fight without a doubt. But I like Valter Walker here, man. I think this guy is like a six foot six, a massive dude for a heavyweight. He's athletic. He can get takedowns. He can wrestle. He can strike. He seems like the complete package, man. I think he goes in there and probably KOs Lucas Bresky or just takedowns Bresky and destroys him. One thing that I can see happening in this fight is Bresky surviving the first round and somehow coming back for the second and third round and getting a victory. It's just that simple. But at the end of the day, man, give me Valter Walker to win this fight um, by finish. I don't give a shit how he wins. I think he wins. And this doesn't need that. This doesn't need a detailed prediction because I, I think Valter Walker will go in there and put work on Lucas Bresky. So that's that. I got Valter Walker by finish. It's just what it is. Finish decision. I've got Valter Walker to win this fight. That's all I care about, okay? Next fight on the card. Let me catch up on chat real quick. My fault, yo, Typer. I meant follow him to the ground and finish him with ground pound shake on my head. Nah, you playing. You playing, Gibbons, bro. You playing. To be honest, Marab is very chinny. He is caveman KO. People are really acting like Marab can get into range and get the takedown without getting sniped. Exactly. Volter looks like a James Bond villain. True. Plus, that knee from Sean O'Malley onto Marab's chin seems like money. If if Sean O'Malley lands the knee that he landed on Chido Vera on Marab, he's KOing Marab easily, putting that boy away. Lucas Brzezeski getting KO'd by Wilder or Cortez Acosta is such an embarrassing loss. True. That is true. Is Volta proof they started cloning MMA fighters? Good question, man. I, I don't know. Orjays has wet dreams about... Okay, bro. Bro, I finna, I finna just have to put you out in timeout, Lost Soul, bro. You should be saying this stupid shit, bro. I'm not rocking with it, bro. But the next fight on the card in the lightweight division, guys, we have Ignacio Bahamondes versus Christos Yagos. This is, like, the easiest fight to predict. And, yeah, it's the easiest fight to predict on the card. For me, 
I'm going with Ignacio Bahamondes. I think Bahamondes is going to beat the dog shit out of Christos Jagos. I think that Ignacio Bahamondes is way bigger than Christos Jagos. He's six foot three at 155. Um, he has a longer reach. He has better striking on the feet. He's got pretty nice submission skills. He's got okay takedown defense. Not the best takedown defense considering his last fight, but he's still dangerous as fuck. Christos Jagos, on the other hand, you know, this guy. This guy has about one round in him, and then he he gets finished if he doesn't, you know, he gets he gets finished after round one if you can't get the finish in round one. So, Christos Jagos at the end of the day, man, this guy's a bit of a boxer, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can um piece up people in the first round. He can get knockouts in the first round. He's very dangerous in the first round, but he completely, completely, like, literally completely fades after the first round. He gasses out. And he starts looking like a fool on the feet. He starts missing shots. He starts getting desperate. And he shoots really shitty takedowns and gets submitted. So Ignacio Bahamondes, on the other hand, man, this guy is a nice, long, rangy striker. You know what I'm saying? He's got nice tips, nice kickboxing, great head kicks, great body kicks, nice spinning wheel kick knockouts, all right? I remember watching him. I remember him watching... I just remember watching him fight Roosevelt Roberts and he KO'd him with like 10 seconds left with like a spinning wheel kick watching it live. I was like, I was like, this dude might be a problem. I'm not going to lie. And I'm just not that sold on Christos Yagos. I mean, Christos Yagos, apparently, I don't know if this is true, but apparently he took down Armin Sarukian. Apparently, apparently he did. So if he did take down Armin Sarukian, I think Oliver is going to KO Sarukian and that's just what it is. But at the end of the day, man, I got Ignacio Bahamondes here all day. I like the money line on Ignacio Bahamondes. I think Ignacio Bahamondes will go in there, land the cleanest strikes throughout the whole fight, keep the distance, keep the range, throw out, throw out a bunch of teeps, pardon me, throw out a bunch of kicks, a bunch of head kicks, a bunch of body kicks, a bunch of kicks in general. And he's going to put work on Christos Yagos, man. I mean, Yagos has one good round in him. And it's not like he's going to knock out Bahamondes, bro. Bahamondes is not chinny. He's extremely durable. He's got great durability, a great chin on him. And Christos Yagos is going to gas out after the first round. And I think we see a Baja Mondes submission here. I think that Christos Yagos in round two is going to start getting peace up to the maximum. He's going to start getting hurt to the body. He's going to get the shit beaten out of him. He's going to get kicked the shit out of him from range. And I think at some point he's going to desperately shoot a crappy takedown. And I think we see Baja Mondes get a submission here. So... For me, man, I like Ignacio Bahamondes by submission in this fight. I think he gets his second round submission. And I think we see Christos Yagos retire because I think Yagos is just mid as fuck. And I think Ignacio Bahamondes is just a little bit better. So give me Ignacio, give me Ignacio Bahamondes, pardon me, by submission. I like the money line on Ignacio Bahamondes. A lot of money has been thrown on Ignacio Bahamondes. I like Bahamondes to get the job done here. I think he keeps the fight on the feet. Absolutely pieces up my boy, Christos Jagos, and then eventually finishes him. But yeah, let me catch up on chat, guys. And the next fight on the card, we have a banger. A banger of a matchup that I'm extremely excited to break down. I cannot wait. Cannot wait to break this card down. Or not this card, but this fight down. Let's get it. Let me catch up on chat real quick. As always, guys, I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. we got 11 people in chat. We have 11 people in chat. I'm not going to ask for likes. I'm going to demand likes. I'm going to demand likes, okay? If you haven't, like the freaking stream, bro. Like the stream, bro. All right? I'm doing these full card previews. I'm breaking down these fights with great, great, excellent detailed predictions. Make sure you smash that like button for your boy, all right? Um, Lucas Tracy's my sunshine. You need to you need to stop, Gibbons, bro. Just stop. Lost Soul's just mad. He can't speed run Skyrim on Legendary. Exactly. Lost Soul wants to be a Armin's wife. He does. People think Marab gonna take down O'Malley over and over again. Yeah, I think he fuck. I think he gets kneed in the face and gets KO'd. They think Marab is a is Habib. Exactly, man. Bahamondes will be in the top 10, 15s ranking one day. I don't know. I don't know if he will, to be honest with you, but I think he's gonna be a really Solid journeyman. Fun fact, Yagos got finished by Armin and Charles. Exactly. Marab isn't a nightmare matchup. No KOs or TKOs. No sub, no control, slow hands, mediocre striking, mediocre chin. I mean, he did he did TKO Mala Marai. So get your facts right, Gibbons. Get your facts right, bro. He did TKO Mala Marai. All right. You don't know what you're talking about, little bro. All right. Jeez. 
Get your shit together, Gibbons. Um, he got dude got slept by Ricky Simone. Exactly. O'Malley. I hate that I'm becoming a fan of him after UFC 299. True. His walkout was so electric. It really, it really wasn't, bro. His walkout was not electric at like at all. Oh, in real life, my bad, my bad, game, my bad. He said his walkout in real life was so electric. Maybe, maybe live it would have been electric, but I'm not gonna lie. Like watching that shit, watching that shit on TV was so fucking lame, bro. There was no, there was no electricity to Sean O'Malley's walkout at UFC 299. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel that pop. I didn't feel that charisma. I didn't feel that that pop of excitement. I didn't feel that like. Conor McGregor is type of fucking walkout. Like it was the most dull walkout I've ever seen in a main event. I'm sorry, but there was no hype on Sean O'Malley's walkout. Like I remember just hearing, "If you are what you say," and like he's walking out, and like barely half the crowd are cheering for him. And I'm like, "Damn, like this shit is kind of dead, bro." I'm not gonna lie. Bahamondes will win similar to how Zell Huber beat Yagos. Exactly. I think he beats Yagos how he beat Rong Zhu by submission. Landwehr could KO his brother-in-law at a barbecue and not lose recognition like Jamal Hill because he's not sweet. Exactly. Is there any chance Bro doesn't beat Cody Brunage in the first 7.5 minutes? I think so. I mean, we never know with this Bro Knuckle guy. Bro Knuckle. Hey, Bro Knuckle. I want to fight. Klein fighting Tiago Moises is such a banger that lost to Klein didn't age that bad. Exactly, man. Klein is a future goat of the sport, so no shame at all. Landwehr for the BMF belt, black as motherfucker belt. Yeah, we should make a BM. Yeah, exactly. We should make a BMF belt. Rick Cody Bummage will find a way to quit versus Bo. Maybe he beats Bo though. Based as hell. I appreciate you. This week's card is one of the cards of all time. It is true. O'Malley is what pe- O'Malley is what people make say out to be. If you know- what the fuck are you saying, Gibbons? Yeah, exactly, bro. Gibbons is- Gibbons is off a perk right now, bro. What are you talking about? I knew he TKO Marlon Marais. I left it out because it didn't support my point. Yeah, I mean that's that's fair. That's fair. That's kind of that's kind of base to be honest with you. That's pretty base, bro. Um, Rigo's gonna soy rage after Armin deals with Oliveira. No, he's gonna be max, max, chatting when Oliveira KOs him. If you're not already an O'Malley fan, his walkout against Piotr was electric. I didn't even watch that fight because I didn't get the chance to because I woke up way too fucking late. Your camera is very bad. My camera is very bad. I'm not going to disagree with you. Bro, recording from his doorbell. Cam, okay, exactly. I don't, I'm not going to get angry at that because I am. And nobody's, nobody's going to do shit about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I have the best setup on MMA YouTube. Yo, by the way, guys, ESPN botched MVP and Kevin Holmes walkout. That's pretty lame. You can't even hear the music, music properly. It made MVP's walkout look lame, but in the arena, it was sick. O'Malley is what people. Say Izzy is my fault, bro. I don't see Armin's path to victory against Charles. Exactly. Charles is Armin's nightmare matchup. Exactly, bro. Like, if if Armin Sarukian cannot hold down Charles Oliveira, Oliveira is going to walk him down, walk him down on the feet, like, take the center of the octagon and KO him out cold. Like, anyone, anyone picking Armin Sarukian, think again, bro. Oliveira has ex- extremely underrated power for a lightweight. He fucking dropped Gaethje uh, like across the cage. I think if Oliveira lands a solid punch on Armin's chin, he's he's gonna drop him. And I think we see I think we see Armin Sarukin get fucked up. Straight up. Um, Rigo, his path to victory is a random thing that makes sense. Whatever, and yeah, okay. Rigo knows Armin will win. He doesn't, though. What if Armin just wrestles Charles for three rounds and gets a sloppy win decision? I will I will be impressed, but I'll just be like, it is what it is, bro. Bo Knuckle is an NPC. He gets lost soul views on YouTube. Exactly. Oliveira is legit the champ if Islam isn't there. That's true. Armin will win. Why are people so blind to how good he is? Why are you glazing Armin like he's your dad? If Armin wins, just hand him the belt when Islam leaves true all right guys we're gonna break down this fight now we have morgan the last pirate shari taking on shappy morasco now for me guys here i like shappy morasco here as the underdog man he's coming in as a slight underdog and i like the value on shappy morasco this guy is 2-0 and in the ufc coming off a injury win over jack jenkins a lot of people thought it was a fluke 
I did not think it was a fluke. I'm I'm an Australian. I'm an Aussie. I, I support all my Australian fighters. And I thought that was a legitimate win. I thought Sheppy landed a beautiful judo throw, which like fucked up Jack Jenkins' arms. And if anything, it was Jack Jenkins' fault for posting the wrong way and completely destroying his elbow. That was a beautiful judo throw. Nobody can hate on Sheppy for getting a quote-unquote fluke win. It was not a fluke win, all right? Morgan Sherry, on the other hand, I don't really think this guy is... I just don't I just don't think this guy is like something special. You know what I'm saying? I don't think either of these guys are special, but I don't really think Morgan Sherry is that good, man. You know what I'm saying? Like he has one good round in him. And if he loses the no, if he doesn't get you out of there in the first round, then he, he looks pretty shit, right? Eight. Sorry, Morgan Sherry. Okay, this guy is 19 and 9. Out of eight out of nine losses for Morgan Sherry are by decision, which means if Morgan Sherry can't knock you out in the first round, he's probably not going to be able to beat you in general. And Shappy Morasco is extremely fucking tough. This guy has been through the gauntlet. This guy has literally been through the gauntlet before he even got to the UFC. This guy has fought. This guy has fought Joe Anderson Brito, Steve Garcia, Pat Sabatini, Yusuf Salal. These are four guys who are in the UFC right now. Like he, Shappy Morasco has literally fought UFC fighters his whole career. He's, he's what, he's 15 and six. And that's not even a bad record if you really think about it. Sheppy fucking beat Trevor Peak. I don't give a shit what anyone says, dude. Trevor Peak is the GOAT of MMA and Sheppy Morasco took his undefeated record. Look, at the end of the day, Morgan Sherry has excellent kicks. You know, he's got great teeps, nice body kicks, nice head kicks, pretty nice, you know, boxing. He's got power in his hands. He's dangerous. He's very dangerous in the first round. But it's, the problem is, if this guy doesn't get you out of there in the first round, bro, he's going to slowly gas out and his output's going to decrease as the fight goes on. And I think Sheppy is a guy that gets stronger as the fight goes on. So I think Morgan Sherry is going to win the first round. I think he's going to beat the dog shit out of Sheppy Morasco. But I think we see a, a switch tied in this fight. I think Sheppy Morasco in the second round starts landing good shots on the feet, starts walking down. Morgan Sherry starts piecing him up, eventually gets takedowns. And... The reality is, man, you know, wherever Morgan Sharia tries to match Sheppy Morasco, I think that Sheppy's better everywhere. I think Sheppy's the better striker. I think he's the better grappler. I think he's got better jujitsu. I think he has better takedown defense, whether the stats say or not. And I like Sheppy Morasco as the underdog here, man. I think he's a great dog. I think he's probably the best underdog of the card. And like I just, you know, like I just said, eight out of eight out of Morgan Sharia's nine losses are by decision. This guy is a one-round fighter. If he can't beat you in the first round, he's probably going to lose, okay? Sheppy Mariscal, he's literally fucking fought like so many UFC fighters before he got to the UFC. He's he's a certified UFC veteran at this point. He's only had two UFC fights, and I claim him to be a UFC veteran because he's, he's already been through the gauntlet. He's already been on the other planet fighting fucking UFC fighters before they even got to the UFC. And he's beaten Yusuf Zalol, which is a great win. He's beaten Pat Sabatini, which is a great win. He's got great wins before he got to the UFC. And he is a UFC caliber fighter. I think Morgan Sherrier is also a UFC caliber fighter. But I think that, you know, I think that the competition in America is a lot better than the competition in England and Europe. And I think people know that, man. I think people know that, you know. Like, Morgan Sherrier beat Manello Zaccini in his last fight. Who the fuck, who is Manelo Zaccini? Who is Manelo Zaccini? Like, like genuinely, who is Manelo Zaccini? Anyone picking Morgan Sherry here is crazy. Now, if Morgan Sherry wins, fair play to him. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cope. Congratulations to Morgan Sherry for getting a W. But I, I just don't see it, man. I think that Sheppy Mariscal is a fucking dog. I think this guy's a savage. He's a brawler. He's tough as nails. He's been through the gauntlet. He's fought everybody that got to the UFC before he even made it to the UFC. He's got wins over he's got wins over UFC caliber fighters who are really good. Like that use that use of Zalol win is aging extremely well. And man, I, I just think that Sheppy Mariscal is pretty fucking underrated to be anything, to be honest with you. I do have a bet on Morgan Sherry. And um yeah, I do have a bet on Morgan Sherry, and I like him to win this fight. So give me Sheppy Mariscal to win this fight by decision. I think he wins the last two rounds, has a tough first round. Give me Sheppy Mariscal to win this fight, guys. I want to see what the chat says about this fight. 
But I'm not really too sold on Morgan Sherry, dude. He fucking beat Manelo Zaccini in his UFC debut. And everybody's like, oh, oh, he's the real deal. Oh, he's the real deal. What he's going to be. She- no, bro. No. Sheppy is a fucking dog. And I like Sheppy Mariscal all day in this fight. So give me Sheppy Mariscal. Let's catch up on chat real quick. Let's catch up on chat real quick. Damn, we got the chat going crazy. Armin is better than Olu's and Islam. I disagree. <laughs> Bro, it's so true. Armin didn't even beat Islam exactly. Why can't people recognize greatness? Armin outstruck Islam. Sheppy got this one. I got Sheppy too. Lucas Tracy is my sunshine, my only sunshine. Islam won't fight Armin again, so Armin winning is bad for the division too exactly. I have Morgan winning by body t- body kick TKO. Very interesting, Anakin, bro. I hope it, I hope you get it right, my boy. But we'll see. Y'all ever think about how y'all ever think about how not nationalistic American MMA fans are? He has amazing striking. To, he does, but Sheppy's pretty good as well. It was a fluke win, but Sheppy is just the the master of the fluke. True. Like it was a fluke win, but it was a beautiful judo throw which led him to break in his fucking arm. So it's like it's a 50-50. I've rarely seen an American be like, "Yeah, I'm backing this guy." Hard because he's American. Exactly. America just hates their own fighters. It's weird. Rigo Cope Hardy, you know, Islam is scared of Armin, and Armin is the best in, the, in that division. Morgan fought Paul Hughes. I think Paul Hughes is better than Morgan. Peak at the faceoff was electric. I can't wait to see Peak, man. I think Peak is coming for murder. I think he's coming for dangerous intentions. I think he's coming for some vicious, malicious, violent, a great fight. That's all I got to say. Lol, Armin is being avoided by the so-called pound-for-pound number one. I can't wait for UFC 300, but after 299, I got super depressed and just kind of felt like crap. Like, there was nothing to look forward to. Um, Do y'all feel that after big cards? I'm praying for you, Hap Chandler, bro. I hope, you, I hope you're better in life. Yeah, I feel that too, but you got to stay busy in life, my boy. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You got to make money, work, bro. That's what we. That's what I'm doing over here when I'm not making videos and live streaming. Bro, it's not, ch- bro, it's not chappy Mariscal. I know. I, I said Sheppy, but it's either it's just either one at this point. I felt so bad for Josh Priestin at 299. Everybody booed him, and then he TKO'd, and, and, then, and then he was TKO'd and finished in 17 seconds. It is what it is. Sheppy also fought Bryce Mitchell and Gregor Gillespie for some reason. Yeah, like he's literally fucking been through the gauntlet. He's fought every single UFC fighter outside the, outside the UFC before he even got to the UFC. Same thing are going to happen to Wilder Cortez Acosta. If Armin wins, Rigo's going to make a vid with Lasso and appraising him, and it will and it will embarrass Lasso exactly. The UFC could solve their problems so easily if they just took one fight off every pay per view main card and made it a fight night main event. Cobbill Hernandez would have been a good main event. Marab Henry, I guess, but mm, it is what it is. Lasso is glazing Armin too much. Exactly. I got Sharia by KO, and I think you're going to be surprised to say Sheppy's the better striker. Is crazy also. Well, it's it's a bit of a 50-50 fight fight on the feet because because what like what is this? What is this? Chat, what is this? People are saying Shep people listen, people are saying Morgan Sherry is the better striker. He's the better striker for round one. He's the better striker for one round. He lands good body kicks, good head kicks, good kicks in general. He's probably gonna only have one good round of great striking, and then his fucking pace is gonna slow down as the fight goes on. And that's where Sheppy's boxing is going to take over. And Sheppy's got nice leg kicks, bro. So people got to people got to relax. It could cost him. It could cost him. Lost Soul setting him up for Lost Soul is setting himself up for a downfall. Y- Yan Song burns JDM Arnold Allen. Vortex MMA agreed. Funny, funny. Everyone saying Sherry is a better ever when Sheppy has that savage dog in him. Exactly, bro. Sheppy Sheppy is fucking him, bro. And that's why I'm picking him. Armin is on a nine fight winning streak. I don't care, bro. Lost to Gamrot, exactly. Gamrot owns fucking Armin. That bitch face Gamrot got lucky. No, nah, Gamrot owns Armin, and that's just what it is. Beat Gamrot. No, nah, he Gamrot beat him as far as I'm concerned. Judges were blind. Gamrot beat Armin Sarukian. I, I I thought I'd just let you guys know that Armin Sarukian lost to Gamrot, and that's what it is. Morgan is on. Morgan is a win two, lost one in fucking cage warriors. Exactly, bro. How how are you gonna pick this guy over Sheppy, bro? Doesn't make sense to me. Scamrot won that low. Exactly. I like Sheppy, but this is hard. Excited for both of these guys in the UFC. English speaking Frenchy. I can't wait, man. You can't cope when Scamrot delivers a special. Exactly. Frenchman. 
it was 3-2 Armin. There was a time... Oh, shit. It was 3-2 Armin. There was a time where Armin dropped him, but it looked like a slip, so it didn't get counted. Man, at the end of the day, bro, at the end of the day, the reality is... At the end of the day, bro, the reality is Gamera won that fight. So everybody can keep coping, bro. Gamera will be the champion. He will own the division. And uh, yeah, I feel bad for everybody that's coping. Vortex sounds like he like a skill issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Honestly, Jeb. Exactly. Yeah, true. Uh, Jeb, Jeb knows what the fuck is up, bro. Jeb is a true fucking legend. So true, Jeb. I would go to war for anyone here in this chat. Yeah, Millie's my dog, bro. I appreciate you, bro. Lost Souls, do you not like Oliveira? What? Scamrock going to win the title off an act of God or just rooting for Armin? Lost Soul helped me not be biased towards fighters. Vortex, Lost Soul is just Armenian. Olives is great, but Armin is different. Armin's a fucking bum, bro. He literally lost to Gamrock, bro. Is he actually Armenian? Gamrock strategically moves like a, a, a regard, so nobody knows if he's going for the takedown or he just got dropped exactly, bro. Hey. Never, never let him know your next move, bro. Gamrod is a beast. Imagine getting rocked by Walking Silver. Exactly. You're picking that guy to beat Oliveira. I don't think so. No, I'm black. If you lose to Gamrod, you can't win a title. Not going to lie. Exactly. Lost soul. I just checked your page. I'm calling cap. Exactly, bro. Exactly. The power of Tism lets you think outside the box like Gamrod. New age money ball. I think so. Hap, that used to That used to happen to me. Respect RJ's exactly respect the king. Like LMFAO, he's Caucasian from the mountains or Caucasian's vortex. Um, Millie, respect, brother. Let's hope it'll let's hope it's all good after 300. On the blood of our fathers and on the blood of our sons, we swore to uphold the, the what the fuck is going on, bro? We're not what the fuck is that about? Millie probably jerks off the hums up fights. Hope you are newish to MMA. Hop, are you newish to MMA? I've only been watching MMA for like two weeks. It's a cool sport though. What the fuck? That's cat, bro. Um, military year. No, I've been watching for a long time, but I still get that Mela Chully feeling after really big cards. It's annoying. Gamrot was on his robbing streak then. Gamrot fucking owns the lightweight division, bro. People can keep crying. What's who's next for Gamrot? Him versus bit. Mm, ah, shit. Him versus Dan Hooker. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Yeah, that's normal. It's probs your dopamine getting fried. True. Are you going to go to 305 in real life? No, I don't, I don't. Me personally, I don't give a shit about going to UFC events. Like, I'm not too high on going to UFC events. I don't really give a shit. I don't care about going to UFC events live. It's just not something that I care about. Islam is genuinely ducking Gamrot. Exactly. I mean, Gamrot should have fought Islam at UFC 294, but, you know, Islam didn't want that smoke. My girlfriend broke up with me because I canceled our date because I didn't want to dopamine stack too much. Vortex, dopamine is a fake chemical. You realize you're calling him Scamrot for, for a reason, right? He is Scamrot, but Scamrot owns the whole division and people can keep crying, so it is what it is. And he beat Amos Rukin. I get Gamrot is stylistically the best, but only two losses is good. Exactly. Scamrot is going to be the high, is going to be the lightweight go tie. He will be. Millie, wait and see. Imagine Sheppy loses to a dude that looks like Juice World and X yeah X X X he casts on there. That'd be pretty fucking sad. I don't think I don't think he's gonna be losing to a guy like that, bro. Um Gamrod versus Dustin should be the fight. They're training partners. Gamrod versus, versus the loser of Charles and Armin Shrew. Lol, Gamra will always be a Benil victim. Exactly, exactly. Benil Chad. There's no shame losing to Benil, though. Benil's a Chad. Bro went to war with washed RDA. Not really. I mean, he fucking he fucking dominated. He dominated. He literally dominated RDA other than getting like dropped in the first round. So no, nah, dopamine is real sometimes. I don't eat a few hours of playing Xbox because I don't want to dopamine stack. I love watching Gamma celebrate after a fluke win. Me too, man. XXX Tentacion has hands. He acts like he just climbed Mount Everest exactly. Armin got slept by a nine and five can in 30 seconds. Gamrot would never. Yeah, bro. And Oliveira, Oliveira isn't losing to a, Oliveira is not losing to, to a fucking scrub like that either, bro. Like, Oliveira's only losses are in the UFC. Like, he's never lost a fight outside the regional scenes. Like, he's, you know, he's a fucking monster, bro. Armin Sarukin's getting put out cold by some random nobody. Dude, Oliveira is knocking out Armin Sarukin. And I'll be the first one to say it right now. It's just what it is. 
But we move on into the next fight, guys. We have Alexander the Great Ape Hernandez taking on Damon Jackson. This is a really tough fight for me, man. This is a tough fight to predict. Um, guys, let me know what your predictions are in the, in the chat because this is like a 50-50 fight where I honestly don't even have a, a clear idea of who's going to win. This is a tough fight, man. Really tough fight to predict. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. Because Damon Jackson is really tricky. Like, he, he has the ability to be able to take people down and hold you down, and he's pretty physical. But Alexander Hernandez is pretty fucking good, so you know what I'm saying? But listen, man, I'm not gonna spend too much. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this pick. For me, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go with Alexander Hernandez. I'm just gonna go with Alexander Hernandez by TKO. Um, I don't know, man, because I, I don't. I don't really want to pick. I don't really want to pick Ale Alexander Hernandez to be honest. I think Damon Jackson might beat him to be honest with you. Fuck, dude. I don't know, man. I don't fucking know, bro. I think Damon Jackson might honestly win, bro. I don't know, man. I think I think I honestly think Damon Jackson might win, bro. I just got this bad feeling, dude. I'm going with Damon Jackson. I'm going with Damon Jackson. Fuck it. I'm going with Damon Jackson. Um. Oh man, I, I don't know. I'm 50-50, bro. I don't fucking know, dude. Fuck it. And I'm, I'm going with Alexander Hernandez. I'm going with Alexander Hernandez. I think Hernandez will get a first round KO. Um, I think that Hernandez in the first round is, is extremely dangerous. And I think he will find the chin of Damon Jackson. Um, Damon Jackson just has a fucking horrible chin. He gets KO'd numerously in his career. He's been ko He's been KO'd like five times, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, he's got a horrible chin. And Alexander Hernandez is durable. You know, he's tough. He can take a beating. He can get the, the shit beat out of him and still keep pushing forward. Um, Look, man, I think that Alexander Hernandez is going to KO Damon Jackson in the, in the first round. I think he's, I think he's going to have a really good performance. But, dude, this guy is so inconsistent, bro. Alexander Hernandez is extremely inconsistent, bro. He's fucking – he's a win-loss, win-loss kind of fighter. Damon Jackson, on the other hand, is consistent, but he has no chin. So, at the end of the day, I'm going with Alexander Hernandez by knockout in the first round. I think he KOs Alexander Hernandez. I'm fucking, I'm actually so dumb. I think Alexander Hernandez KOs Jack, uh, Damon Jackson in round one. But this is a tough fight because Damon Jackson is got fluke. He's fluky as fuck, right? He's got fluke as hell wins. He's, he's just a fluke machine, bro. Like, I can just see him weathering the first round, taking down Hernandez in the second round, and knocking him out with ground and pound. I see it happening, man. But give me Alexander Hernandez to win this fight in the first round. I think, honestly, he will find the chin of Damon Jackson and put him out cold. But I'm very fucking torn on this fight, bro. This is this is, this is an extremely tough fight. I just don't even know. Give me Alexander Hernandez by first round KO. But I'm not confident whatsoever. I'm not confident in it whatsoever. Yo, all Jays, I'm going to drop a gamma joke. Only we will get. You cannot deny him. Exactly, exactly. Hernandez missed weight. He probably wins by Tico in the second round. Exactly. Are you using Herberman research? Because bro has like 40 girlfriends, so he's deaf a grifter. Don't listen to him while he's trying to take all the fun. What are you talking about, Norseman? Armin got that win back. Congrats. You are having rematches with Cairns. What a superstar we have here. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Damon Jackson with hair will win. Maybe. The C Rod strategy, miss weight by four pounds, win, repeat. True. Lol, the whole division will, will uh, be in Armin's shadow for the next 10 years. That's just fucking cap, bro. Armin is used to the gills. Norseman, I'm using research that has repeatedly come to me inside of my dreams. Okay. Hernandez sucks, but Damon has one of the worst chins in the UFC. Exactly. Lost Soul MMA says, you're about to jinx it. I got Hernandez, probably, but probably KO. I think he KOs Damon Jackson for sure. Yeah, this is, a, this is a tough fight to predict how it goes. Hernandez gaslighting Cerrone was funny as fuck. Hernandez so inconsistent. He is, bro. He's a win-loss, win-loss fighter, dude. How did he gaslight Cerrone again? Lol, exactly. Jackson's chin is suspicious. Yeah, dude, he, does, he doesn't even have a chin. He did good versus Billy Q. He did do good, but he was like he, he was like close to getting KO'd like eight times in that fight. I have to go soon. I don't want two dopamine stack anymore, true. 
Jackson saying he's working eight, 18 hour days and just opened up his gym going back and forth between two gyms every day, new hair. Maybe he wins, but I think Alexander Hernandez is probably going to beat him. I'm in victims will gatekeep the division. Honestly, I'm thinking of just picking Damon Jackson, bro. Like, fuck it, bro. Like, I don't even know, bro. Like, I don't even know, bro. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to say? <clears throat> Dominic Ray is refusing to speak Spanish to that female reporter was the most base thing. True. Armin didn't even... Armin don't even got any victims. Exactly, bro. You can't even be an Armin victim, bro. Wait, Hob, what? I feel like Armin will win off of something that just makes zero sense and off of his and Oliveira's fights histories. Did you guys see that video of Hernandez calling Jackson's conversation about Hernandez hating on Cowboy pretty homosexual? I did see it. I thought it was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. I did see it. I put Hernandez round one K on topology, I think. Some chick wanted to hear his accent, but he shut it down immediately. Low paced. Jackson's still holding on to that trash talk from Cowboy and Hernandez, which was mad long ago. Exactly. Um, yeah, that was funny, Low, when he said he was just drinking beers with Cowboy. Base, Reyes, Billy Q, average. Yeah, Billy Q is not that good. I've, I've said this for a long time. Billy Q is not that good. I Like, if you picked Billy Q against Barboza, you're actually, you're just, you're a casual. Um, Ty Ty bets, if Jackson wins, that would be funny as hell. When Connor loses to a random can in the US, uh, when Connor loses to a random can, the UFC signs him. When Armin loses to a random can, he has to run it back with a fight on his level. Exactly, dude. Armin is a gamrot victim. He is. Hernandez was drinking beers and eating steaks in Brazil with Cowboy. Yeah, look, I'm going with Hernandez first round KO. I'm not going to be fucking surprised one bit whatsoever if Damon Jackson gasses out Alexander Hernandez and wins a TKO. I'm not going to be surprised at all. I'm just not going to be surprised at all. All right, guys, we've fucking made it. We've made it to the main event. We have a banger in the main event. This is going to be a great fight. Let's get straight into it, guys. We have the rematch. We have the rematch between Brendan All-In Allen and Chris, the action man, Kurtz. This is a tricky fight because I know a lot of people are going to be extremely confident in Brendan Allen, but... I don't know, man. Like, th this is stylistically a bad matchup for Brendan Allen, especially on the feet. Like, Chris Curtis has already beat this guy. And I remember watching that fight live and being like, damn, like, this is a bit of a weird fight. Like, Curtis is actually kind of beating him up on the feet, and then he KOs him. So I'm very torn on this fight, but I don't know, man. For me, honestly, for me, I'm, I'm going with Chris Curtis, bro. I'm taking the underdog in Chris Curtis. I like the value on Curtis. Listen, listen up. I know that Chris Curtis is 37. I know he's past his prime. I know that Brendan Allen is peaking, um, peaking to his prime. He's 28. He's got so much potential. Brendan Allen will be peaking to his prime very soon. But I think Chris Curtis can knock him out, man. I think Chris Curtis can honestly knock him out again. I just, I got this feeling, bro. I got this feeling that they're gonna they're gonna stand on the feet and trade. And uh, Brendan Allen, you know, he's going to try and mix in the takedowns. Bro, I don't know, man. Because, like, I just don't see Chris Curtis getting submitted. I don't think this guy's ever been submitted in his career. I think this fight is way closer than people are acting like it's not. Like, people are acting like Allen's going to destroy Chris Curtis. I just don't see it. This is a really bad matchup for uh, Brendan Allen. You know, I'm not going to say, like, I'm not going to say that, uh, Darth or Jays, I might turn on my light. Oh shit, what the fuck? What the fuck? Hold up a second. Off, on, off, on. No, what the fuck? Bro, I went from Darth or Jays to white or Jays, bro. What the fuck is going on, bro? Did y'all see that shit, bro? One more time, bro. Yo, what the fuck? Bro, I'm done. I'm done with that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, give me Chris Curtis to win this fight. I don't give a fuck what anyone else says. You know, the, the fact that people are extremely confident on Brendan Allen means that you're a little bit delusional. I don't even think Brendan Allen is that good. I've never thought Brendan Allen was that good, okay? Brendan Allen has a phenomenal ground game, great jiu-jitsu. He's well-rounded. He's great. He's a good fighter. He's got pretty good stand-up. He's improving stand-up, good kicks, you know, nice straight punches. 
But, I mean, dude, this is middleweight. This is the worst division in the UFC. It's the middleweight division. And Chris Curtis can most definitely win this fight. He's already won this. He's already fucking beat Brandon Allen before. So, for me, man, I like Chris Curtis in this fight, bro. Like, if this fight stays on the feet, it's not like Brendan Allen's going to absolutely destroy Chris Curtis on the feet. Like, th these guys will be, you know, kickboxing at some point. And Chris Curtis has great takedown defense. And Brendan Allen, you know, he, I think Brendan Allen can take down Chris Curtis, but I don't think he's going to be able to submit Chris Curtis. Listen, if Brendan Allen submits Chris Curtis, you know, then he he's a legitimate title contender. Because, like, submitting Chris Curtis is extremely impressive, all right? It's one thing to KO Chris Curtis, but if you submit him, that's fucking insane. Look, man, this is – every fight takes place on the feet. I think Brendan Allen, you know, he's going to be very focused and, and not too uh, cocky because he knows that he's been fucking KO'd by this guy before. He knows that he's lost to Chris Curtis before, so he's going to be very calm. He's going to be uh, striking with Chris Curtis on the feet. He's going to be throwing a lot of body kicks, a lot of kicks in general, a lot of teeps. And over time, Brendan Allen will start gaining confidence. But I think Chris Curtis will find his fucking chin, bro, because I'm going to explain why. Brendan Allen is not a Jack Hermanson, all right? Brendan, Brendan Allen does not fight like Jack Hermanson. Brendan Allen is not a guy that runs around the octagon and pity patters and runs away, you know, throws a combination, runs away. And those are the type of fighters that Chris Curtis really struggles with, you know, even against a Mavov. A Mavov was so much quicker and so much explosive than Chris Curtis. Brendan Allen is really not that explosive, and he's, and he's not that quick. Like, he's a big dude for middleweight, but he's a bit slow for a middleweight as well. Like, he moves like a slow middleweight. And, you know, Brendan Brendan Allen beat Paul Craig, but it's not that it's not that hard to beat Paul Craig, man. It's really not. Like, Brendan Allen fucking was piecing him up on the feet, but I'm pretty convinced that I could knock out Paul Craig on the feet. I'm just going to leave it at that. And... Yeah, man. Like, the only way that I see Brendan Allen winning this fight is by, like, submission or decision. Because if he doesn't, I think Chris Curtis will be in his face. I think Chris Curtis has excellent body shots. I think Chris Curtis has extremely underrated boxing. And Brendan Allen doesn't have the fight IQ to beat a guy like Chris Curtis. Like, he, he's not a guy... He's just... He's not a guy that's going to be throwing combinations, then running away. Throwing a combination, running away. At some point in this fight, you know, Brendan Allen will be, you know, in range, in boxing range with Chris Curtis. And if he's not smart and he tries to land a shot on Chris Curtis when he doesn't see Chris Curtis about to knock his fucking chin over, I think Chris Curtis will win this fight. Now, I know a lot of people are convinced on Brendan Allen. I know that Brendan Allen is, you know, getting into his peak. Um, he's 28. He has so much potential. He's a great fighter. He's very talented. But Chris Curtis is a fucking, you know, underrated fighter, bro. He really is. You know, even against Kelvin Gaston, where he lost, he had a war with Kelvin. He was bringing the fight to Kelvin after getting headbutted, you know. And the only way that you beat Chris Curtis is like if you dance around the octagon and you don't fight Chris Curtis's type of fight where you brawl in the pocket with him. I think Brendan Allen doesn't have the fight IQ to do that for all five rounds. I think if Brendan Allen takes down Chris Curtis, I think Chris Curtis will be able to survive on the ground. I think Chris Curtis has pretty good submission defense. And yeah, man, I, I mean, if Brendan Allen does uh, submit Chris Curtis, I will be thoroughly impressed. I, I think that Brendan Allen will be the real deal. But until then, man, this is a this is a legit 50-50 fight. And I'm going with Chris Curtis by TKO in this fight. I think that Chris Curtis will find the chin of Brendan Allen at some point in this fight. I think that Chris Curtis will be motivated. He will be hungry. Um, he's going to push a pace as well. You know what I mean? Because Brendan Allen will look good in this fight. He's going to be throwing body kicks. He's going to be throwing kicks. He's going to be allegedly piecing up Chris Curtis on the feet. But he can only piece up Chris Curtis on the feet for so long until a point where they start, you know, getting a bit closer in range. They start, you know, throwing strikes. They both start getting a bit more comfortable in each other's range. And boom, you know, Chris Curtis him, hits him with a massive fucking shot. And yeah, man, Chris Curtis is a tough guy to finish, bro. Like Chris Curtis ain't going to... Brendan Allen's not going to submit Chris Curtis. He's not going to knock out Chris Curtis. The only way he can beat Curtis is by decision. And I just think five rounds is too many rounds for Curtis to not have a good fucking victory, man. You know what I'm saying? So for me, or a good chance to win the fight. So for me, give me Chris Curtis to win this fight by knockout. I think Curtis is extremely underrated. I would say stay away from this fight in general. I like the over two and a half here. Um, 
you know, because I'm I just I wouldn't bet on either one of these guys. I don't trust either one of these guys. And it's middle it's middleweight, bro. Like anything can happen up middleweight. I think Chris Curtis knocks out Brendan Allen. I think let's let's be real, guys. Let's be fucking real. All right, let's be real. Brendan Allen, as of right now, he's on a six fight winning streak, I believe. He's on a streak, all right. He's been looking phenomenal. He's been looking great. He's been, you know, submitting everybody. He's been dropping and submitting people. He's a beast. But he's he's kind of due for a loss, you know. 23 and 5, it's a phenomenal record right here. 23 and 5 is a phenomenal record, but he's due for a loss. And I think Chris Curtis will give him that loss. I think Chris Curtis is underrated. He's got great boxing. He's got great takedown defense. He's got great submission defense. He, he holds a good pace. He's got pretty decent cardio. And dude, dude, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. I just think that Chris Curtis is a bad matchup for Brendan Allen. So I like Chris Curtis in this fight. You know, if Brendan Allen wins, I'm not going to cope because I'm not a guy that copes if I get my pick wrong. I'm really only a guy that copes if someone got done dirty, like Bruno Silva got done dirty last week. Can we fucking talk about that as well? Brent up. Uh, Bruno Silva got done so dirty last week. He got eye poked. He got, he got one, two eye poked. And somehow that fight wasn't a no contest. Hashtag justice for Bruno Silva. I, I want you guys right now in the chat, okay? I'm, I may sound like an NPC. Hashtag justice for Bruno Silva. Type it up in the chat, bro. Because that's my boy right there, Bruno Silva. He got done dirty. The fight should have been a no contest. Justice for Bruno Silva. Amen. But yeah, give me Chris Curtis to win this fight. Give me Chris Curtis to win this fight. I think he wins this fight by knockout in the third, fourth round. I think Brendan Allen's going to really kind of his peak in this fight where he looks pretty good early on. And then the fight's just going to start getting a lot closer as the fight goes into the later rounds. And I think Curtis is going to land a shot on him, bro. You know what I'm saying? So give me Chris Curtis to win, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, your ideal UFC 300 winners. I, I'm not going to talk about that because I'll say, save it for another video. All in, Allen. Let's go. Yo, this card is so bad. I thought he was still in the prelims. I'm not even kidding. That's fucking funny as hell. Allen decision? True. Vortex, me too. I didn't realize Alexander Hernandez is a co-made in 2024. Exactly, bro. Bro, what is this? You look like a Sith Lord, bro. Yeah, I know. My camera's horrible, man. My camera's horrible. Bear with me. I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think so too. What's up, Landon? He says, bro, turned into Wraith Phantom Ghost. <laughs> Darth Orjays. What's up, Sheila? What's good with you, my boy? Curtis is inconsistent. True. His last fight versus Marc-Andre Barrio wasn't impressive. That That's true, but at the same time, man, that doesn't really mean anything in the middleweight division. Like, it just doesn't. Chris Curtis has insane takedown defense, but I've also legitimately done zero research to make a prediction for this fight exactly. Jebediah, laughing emojis. It's middleweight. Curtis might win. That's that's what I'm basing it off. Bro's tweaking off the fen. I'm tweaking off the fen. I've never tried a fen, and I, I never plan on trying fen. Bro's code switching. We're, we're going to keep it black for a little while, then we'll change it to white. Allen is well-rounded, but he's slow. He's a fucking slow fighter, bro. Like I think I could one-two Allen down the pipe, bro. I know, I know I'm talking shit like an NPC, but I think I'm more explosive and more quicker than Brendan Allen. Um, bro's, pl bro's plug gave him the Fent card by accident. Exactly. Or Jay's if Brendan Allen and Chris Curtis went grand for grand in a Fent off, who would survive the longest? I think Chris Curtis for sure. It's got to be Allen. No, I, I would. I think Chris Curtis probably would. But Brendan, Brendan Allen probably has a good chance. Allen and Pi for both, they just give me that vibe. They're, they're pretty fucking annoying. Allen is a different fighter from 2021. That's that's true. That's true. But Chris Curtis is just such a bad matchup, dude. Anakin Skywalker is my sunshine, my only sunshine. He makes me so happy when the skies are gray. Sorry, yo, I'm autistic. I think I can't get off this sunshine thing. Low. 98% of UFC fans have autism. That's true. That is true. Allen is the favorite, right? He's he's a two to one favorite coming into this fight. Yup. Curtis arguably would have won that Gaslam fight if it didn't. End early with the head clash. True. Curtis did get taken down by Imavov and lost to Kelvin. Yeah, but th that, those aren't really bad. Like, those aren't really bad losses if you think about it. Like, I, I think Imavov schools Brendan Allen. And I think Kelvin Gaslam has a good chance of beating Brendan Allen. Curtis beat Kelvin. I don't know if he beat Kelvin, but I, I do remember that fight being pretty close. I'm not going to lie. 
The favorite will lose. That means Allen will be up 3 0 before getting TKO'd again. Exactly. Keep that same energy for Cedric as Dumas. I will, but like, yeah, obviously, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Obviously, he got, obviously, Dumas got done dirty in that fight, but Dumas would have fucking lost that fight anyways. I mean, I mean, sit here, sit here right now and tell me that Cedric as Dumas would have beaten his ultimate Rizzi boy. I don't think so. So it is what it is. Bruno Silva can get it overturned. It's up to him. Nah, you're tweaking, Jeb, bro. Come on, bro. You're tweaking off the fence, bro. I didn't like that fight. Bad look for Chris, but maybe it's the media's fault for be- for him being cocky. I just think I just think that's what happens when you fight Mark Andre Burial, man. You get scrappy. You know, you get into you get into these tough fights. You get really scrappy, and that's what it is. I mean, are we are we forgetting? Are we forgetting that Chris Curtis? Stuffed 25 takedowns from Hadolfo Vieira, who's an elite jiu-jitsu black belt, who is submitting everybody in the UFC. Chris Curtis stuffed every single fucking takedown. So I think he's going to be able to survive, you know, the grappling of Brennan Allen. I really do, man. Like, I think Allen's good. I think um he's got a lot of talent and potential, and he's on a great streak right now. But sometimes when you're on a streak like Brennan Allen is right now, sometimes it has to be broken. And sometimes it will be broken by people you didn't think it will get broken by. And I think Chris Curtis is that guy, man. I do, man. Silva needs to be cut. Silva needs to be thrown into a title eliminator fight, to be honest with you. Wyman told his coaches to overturn it, but they haven't shrugged. That's on them. <laughs> Jeb, bro, you're fucking playing, bro. Rigo, quit trying to sound like you know MMA. Curtis versus Gaslam didn't end early. His fight with Imovov did. What are you going to say to that, Rigo? What are you going to say to that right now, bro? What are you going to... You, you, you got a minute and a half to respond to Tai Tai, bro. Tell me right now. BJJ guys suck at takedowns. That's why. That's why they do BJJ. True. And it's it's not like it's not like Brendan Allen's a good fucking wrestler, bro. Like the one time he took down Chris Curtis in their first fight was off a kick. So, you know, Brendan Brendan Allen isn't as quick as a guy like Imovov who's just gonna be able to like explosively and extremely quickly shoot a takedown on Chris Curtis and get him down. I, I just don't see that happening with Brendan Allen. Look, like either either Brendan Allen puts on a masterclass of a fight or he just fucking wins the first two, three rounds, only only to get carried in the fourth round, the third round. So I like Chris Curtis here, man. I, I honestly like Chris Curtis. It is what it is. It's middleweight, bro. Do you think do you think I'm gonna be confident picking a guy at middleweight? Like, no, it's 50-50 always, bro. Like, even Cedric S. Dumas and Nozolton Rizaboyev was a 50-50 in a way. Like, we, we, I knew and everybody knew. Yeah, I knew and everybody all knew that fucking Rizaboyev was going to KO Dumas. But, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I think I know more about the sport than Salty Bets. <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> That's funny, my guy. Who should Deste Sentence fight next? Maybe the winner of Aldo Martinez. Yes, I think he should fight Aldo. Death Sentence versus Jose Aldo would be phenomenal. Would be such a good fucking fight card. That'd be such a bang of a fight. Would it not? I mean, tell me right now. Would it not be a bang of a fucking fight? Allen's, Allen subbed Craig. He did submit Craig, but then again, like Jimmy Crute, Jimmy Crute submitted Craig. So how good is how good is he actually? After watching the first fight back, I'd say Curtis won round one. Every shot he landed hurt Allen exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But guys, I want to say thank you so much to everybody for tuning into today's live stream for UFC Fight Night Allen versus Curtis 2. Guys, thank you so much for joining the live stream. I will be dropping a video tonight for the next two ga- uh, next two days, pardon me. Thank you so much, guys. And until then, I hope you all have a great night. God bless you all, and I'll see you soon.